All right. So a uh, very warm welcome to all the attendees for this uh, demo day session of India Smart Protein Innovation Challenge 2021. 2022. As you know, this demo day is to showcase smart protein solutions um, that our set of cohort has been working on for the past five months to help feed 10 billion people by 2050 and to help secure the future of food in India and worldwide as well. This demo day is for track two, which is focused on entrepreneurship. And uh, I am your host, Shardul Dabir, along with Nicole Roke. We are innovation specialists at GFI India, and we've been primarily uh, conducting this challenge over the past four or five months uh, with this journey that you're seeing on your screen. So the India Smart Protein Innovation Challenge was started and conceptualized at GFI India because over the past three years, as we've been building the Indian smart protein ecosystem, what we have realized is people really want SciTech talent. At the same time, entrepreneurs and founders and market leaders also want to have an understanding and an incubation acceleration kind of a journey to help them get started on their smart protein journey. So with this two, two prong goal, we decided to start the uh, India Smart Protein Innovation Challenge. So track one focuses on um, scientific innovation and track two focuses on more commercial entrepreneurship um, led ventures and startups. So the motto of ISPIC 2021 was quite simple. Uh, it, it was to inspire, engage, and innovate uh, the next generation of smart protein innovators, helping them grow their skills at the same time, help build the 21st century food economy, protein economy, and also to sustain, uh, build a sustainable future of food. Uh, and obviously, you all know, if you're watching this recording, maybe you've gone through our website, maybe you've already heard about the smart protein sector and how crucial it is for climate change uh, and environmental degradation and preserving that and how important it is for global food security at the same time, solving for malnutrition at the same time, the immense risks of public safety um, and also resource utilization um, that are present in the food uh, supply chain are being um, you know, tackled by by the smart protein sector. So the ISPIC 2021 challenge was basically a four, five month journey that we designed um, and was focused on reimagining food systems as they currently stand um, to basically build a emerging Indian smart protein sector. And our focus, like I said, is to meet the needs of protein needs specifically through sustainable sources of 10 billion people by 2050, one sixth of whom are going to be Indian at that time, right? So it's going to be a huge market at the same time, a huge stakeholder in the global food economy. Um, so we started this journey back in August last year, right? When we first invited applicants for this challenge, having uh, done a ISPEC 2020, which was a huge success, uh, Pan India. Um, so we started this journey and across four phases, phase one, which was induction, uh, whereby we firstly gave a lot of our participants basic understanding of what the smart protein sector, the platforms involved, the market business policy, regulatory side of things um, through a comprehensive course. And then basically we filtered out the best candidates that could go on to the next phase of matchmaking. And these candidates came together, formed complementary teams um, and essentially created a five page proposal of what they wanted to innovate on based on the specific white space opportunity areas that our team as experts who are building this sector had identified as the key value chain areas for the growth of the sector uh, in India. And uh, they submitted this as part of phase two, which was ideation. This was what they were ideating on. Um, once again, uh, putting a filter on the best teams, we, we chose few top teams to go into phase three, which was the inspiration phase where they were mentored by industry experts, um, academicians, research experts, and then essentially uh, they are now uh, presenting, the top teams are going to be presenting to you today at the demo day, uh, which is World Protein Day uh, on 27 February, which was recently done. So very thematic to how uh, the you know world is viewing the smart protein and its changing needs. Um, as you know, that reaching out to all the colleges and relevant stakeholders, whether they are students, researchers, entrepreneurs, professionals in the food and biotech uh, industry and allied industries, agriculture, et cetera, who, who have a stake in this kind of a sector was crucial. So we uh, started out with a smart protein ambassador program. We recruited uh, enthusiastic ambassadors across India, um, you know, 20 plus ambassadors who, who spent uh, around a month with us outreaching uh, across colleges across universities. And last year, we were able to reach more than 25,000 people. And this year as well, um, we hope that we have reached a similar number. 
So it's been quite exciting, the reach of our uh, outreach campaign and how we have reached almost all states in India across tier one, tier two, three or three cities, across tier one, tier two, three or three institutes and, uh, you know, multiple other food and FMCG companies as well. So just to tell you a little bit about uh, phase one, uh, in which we had 745 participants this year, uh, spanning 116 cities across 25 states. Like I said, it, it was a pan-India participation, uh, you know, over 590 unique colleges, universities and organizations were represented by this cohort. And after going through that intensive uh, world's first smart protein digital lab for a month, almost 320 candidates were certified with a certificate so that they, that can boost their careers, that can help them in networking. Uh, and we had 368 bachelors, 146 masters and 11 PhD students apply. Um, and uh, along with them, there were 15 researchers, 86 entrepreneurs and 112 young professionals out of these. Um, after that, like I said, through a filtering process, we had 96 teams, which formed a team during the matchmaking week, and multiple teams were focusing on uh, scientific innovation, 53 teams to be exact in phase two, and 33 teams uh, were focusing on track two, which is entrepreneurship, which we are here today in this track two demo day. Uh, 10 teams were focusing on cultivated meat, eggs, and dairy. 21 teams were focusing on fermentation-derived meat, eggs, and dairy. And 68 teams were focused on plant-based meat, eggs, and dairy protein innovation. Um, so after engaging in phase three with almost 40 plus inspiration webinars and mentoring sessions and hundreds of hours worth of resources, finally, these teams have created a unique proposal, which we are uh, going to see today. And we are quite all excited for this demo day. Uh, as you can see, there are some stats here of how many teams have qualified uh, during the demo day in each of these, uh, each of these categories. Um, like I said, throughout the journey, there were multiple mentors from the industry, from academia, uh, from our uh, larger GF Ideas India ecosystem, uh, our community who have helped these um, students with multiple knowledge webinar sessions with one on one connections, um, and also mentoring so that uh, people could improve upon their ideas from multiple angles of science, business policy, regulation, etc. And uh, you can see all of these sessions now on our YouTube handle. So if you just put in GFI India on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can check out our remaining sessions as well. You know, they range from uh, creating a pitch deck to uh, financial modeling to IP considerations, um, you know, culinary applications, science and technology aspects, uh, scale up. So multiple key relevant topics that we have identified uh, to accelerate the ecosystem have been now made open source um, thanks to the sponsors of the challenge as well. And uh, last but not the least, uh, a big thank you to all our sponsors, right, who've made this uh, possible. Our, key, our, our title sponsor, Capri Global Capital Limited, uh, our key sponsors, NICE and Alchem Foundation, and our organizing partner, CIA Co. At the same time, our supporting partners and the ecosystem they're in. For track one, a lot of these are relevant in supporting partners, Bayrak, Niftim, Sign, um, Abel, Ccamp, Atil Innovation uh, Center at CCMB, uh, IIT Madras Bio Incubator. At the same time, our smart protein ecosystem partners, uh, which is uh, representing a lot of our judges in the panel today as well. Blue Horizon, DSG, Thought for Food, Fixie, Brink, Ankur Capital, Exelor Labs, uh, ProVeg Incubator, Omnivore, Agni, Ahimsa VC, Big Idea Ventures, and Huddle. Thank you so much for all your uh, support throughout this four-month journey. And we hope that you continue supporting the smart protein sector and our cohort of participants pose the challenge as well. This is uh, all from my end about the challenge. Uh, there are a lot of details, but you should definitely take a look at smartproteinchallenge.com or smartproteinchallenge.in uh, when you have the time so that you can go through the entire website and understand different aspects. You can also take a look at the solutions wall where we featured last year's hundreds of solutions from different innovative teams. And this year's solutions would be up, uh, uploaded here as well soon. Um, so you can check out what kind of proposals, what kind of ideas uh, a lot of our participants have when it comes to innovation and taking it uh, to the next level in the smart protein ecosystem. Um, so just welcoming uh, our judges for the day, I'll request you all to switch on your cameras and kind of um, just say hi. Um, basically, we have uh, 
our guest is is Siddharth Kothari, who is a partner at Ahimsa VC, who they are building the smart protein ecosystem by investing in early stage and mid stage startups. Uh, Karan Keswani, who is the venture partner at Drink Accelerator. Divya Murthy, who is senior investment manager at Provage Incubator. We have Pooja Shirali, who is the associate at DSG Consumer Partners. Sarthak Rastogi is an investment associate at Haril Accelerator. We have Sonia Sadnani, who is an investment professional at our organizing partner CIA Co at IIM Ahmedabad. We have we have Mr. Vidya Shankar, who's the head at Network of Indian Cultural Enterprises, NICE, and also uh, a sponsor for the challenge. We have uh, Dr. Hao Lu, who's the scientific analyst at Big Idea Ventures. And uh, last but not the least, we have our title sponsor representation from um, Nita Zoshi, who's the associate VP of CSR at Kepri Global. So we are really excited for our panel of judges today. And we hope that, uh, you know, uh, you all find the pitches from our top 12 teams as part of track two, um, intriguing as well. So without further ado, uh, let's start with the pitches. We are on a tight schedule today. Um, so each team is going to come on board and going to pitch um, their solution for six minutes. And then we'll have seven minutes sharp to have a few Q&A uh, uh, from the judges for the teams as a follow-up of that. And then we'll move on to the next team. That's, that's going to be uh, the schedule for today. And we hope you enjoy the pitches. Um, so um, let's get started. So before we get started, let me quickly introduce uh, our first team uh, that is going to present today, which is Phototech. So really quickly giving an introduction of our team Phototech. It's a team focused on fermentation derived protein and ingredients and has a team of Asha Bangar, Rami Jada, Arun Saini, Rakesh Yadav, and they are transforming the future. That's their tagline. Um, Phototech India's team is made of Rami, who is the founder and CEO, with seven years of experience in uh, waste management, R&D, and international trade and relations. Arun Saini is acting as their chief production officer with experience with Nestle and DS Group. Uh, Rakesh Yadav is acting as a chief marketing officer with experiences at Discovery and Red Bull. And Asha is the country manager with four years of international relations and business experience. So uh, on to you, Team Phototech. Hi, we are Team Phototech, and it breaks our heart to think that at the end of these six minutes, six kids would have died from malnutrition. This is why we have developed truly sustainable protein ingredients so that nutrition manufacturers can supply their consumers with products that are more aligned with their values. The problem is that food manufacturers can't afford triple impact ingredients. Products are high in sodium, among other unhealthy ingredients, and of 25 million hectares. of vegetable waste into edible mushrooms for the obtention of a flavor and answer rich in protein and their side streams are also utilized for multiple applications like fertilizers methane gas biomaterials as well as for animal nutrition our flavor enhancer is further refined with the help of bio of jivudan and in the same process we also get a protein isolate with a purity level of more than 90 percent which is being offered to various plant-based food industries. The opportunity here for us is very much clear. As shown by the data above, in 2020, we saw a tremendous growth of about 27% in the sales of plant-based food, which results in an increased investment in the industry by three times as compared to any single year. The plant-based industry here leads the way, and the trends are being followed in the 2021 as well. Following this opportunity, we helped three vegan manufacturers in the development of 13 different alternative meat products, ranging from sausages to burger patties as well as whole cut meats, which results in an RFQ of about 35,000 US dollars in a monthly recurring revenue from just one of the 800 potential clients of Colombia. And the Live Green company is one such key stakeholder we have worked with. Our flavor enhancer reduces up to 90% of the sodium level coming from other alternatives available in the market. And as it is labeled as edible mushrooms, which is a natural food product, it attracts our consumer in terms of its clean label. And since it is obtained by imitating the nature's way of reducing vegetable waste, it is more than eco-friendly, it is eco-positive. Nature's benefit derived from our technology can easily be appreciated in five KPIs that compare our environmental performance versus alternatives. For this reason, 
We were chosen by Jivota among 400 startups last year to substitute their yeast extract, second only to red meat in CO2 emissions in the food industry. They lead the flavor industry by commanding 19% of the 128 kilotons of yeast extract with our product, which has very clear unit economics. Although we are a B2B ingredient supplier, we also have validation for the franchising or licensing of our technology, which is the most unique aspect of our offering. Anyone, anywhere can monetize from locally available vegetable waste by turning it into a product we require for the alternative ingredients industry. We have a clear understanding of our franchise model cash flow. And for this reason, corporates related to Jivota such as Bueller are interested in taking our solution to their clients worldwide to turn their side streams into an ingredient that another corporate, BioOrigin, can refine into a more powerful enhancer, a protein isolate and other valuable ingredients. After being named one of the scalable solutions by the GFI India report on the fungi fermentation sector in 2021, we applied and got accepted into the Smart Protein Challenge. Here we built Footer Team India with a strong background in relevant industries. This resulted in insightful months of connections with varied stakeholders in India that ultimately got us accepted into the world's leading plant-based accelerator. This brings us further towards our funding and mentoring for a steady growth in such a relevant country. The work had started with me, but it is now in hands of a group of people that have optimized the technology towards a scalability that can match the projections of our advisors. They who have a background in both mass distribution and strategic partnerships. Our milestones are only achievements because they have allowed us to decentralize protein ingredients production anywhere in the world. Each plant brings up to 24 new jobs and satisfies continuous protein requirements of up to 140 people at zero cost. To put that in perspective, we do have a powerful financial projection, but our true success would be five years from now when we take 0.5% of the yeast extract market, allowing us to entirely cover the protein demand of 3% of the children that are dying of malnutrition as we speak. Simple mathematics tells us that a partnership with the main flavor suppliers can allow us to serve a 16% of that market and deliver the full protein requirement of every starving child all year long. To fuel our vision, we are in conversation with important stakeholders, and we believe that your advice and expertise will take us beyond. Thank you very much. Perfect. So thank you so much, Rami and team, for that fantastic pitch. Um, let's get to the Q&A. So uh, Rami, on to you. And judges, if you have a question uh, for Team Photo Trek, I'll encourage you to uh, you know, switch on your camera and ask the question. And um, you can just raise your hand as well, and I can get, get you going. Yeah, Siddharth, please go ahead. So we have Siddharth from Ahimsa VC. Hi. Yeah, thanks. Hi, thanks for that pitch. That, that sounds like very interesting work uh, that you're all uh, doing. I have, a, I have a general question. I just want to know if you can talk about where you, in a good case scenario, where you see yourself three to five years from now on. Uh, what would the state of the company be in terms of, uh, you know, market share, capitalization, geographies present, uh, types of sales figures you would be looking at in that much time? Thank you, Siddhar, for that question. In four to five years from now, we, we will have taken 0.5% of the yeast extract market worldwide and the subsequent protein that we can split from our, our flavor enhancer in that sense. And that is thanks to the partnership with Givaudan, which in turn is a partnership with BioOrigin to put in our flavor enhancer within their product and refine the protein isolate from all of our franchisees. In five years, 90% of our production will come from franchisees. We will have no capex invest. We'll no fund uh, raising uh, for capex. Thank you, Rami. Uh, unless you have a follow up question, Siddharth, I'll go on to Sarthak for the next question. Sarthak from Hadi. Hi, hi everybody. Um, quick question on just the Indian landscape. Um, what sort of supply chain issues have you felt, uh, uh, you know, in terms of adoption? And perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about your margin structure specifically. Uh, catered to India, right? And and how how has adoption fared for you? Are you still close to commercialization with any Indian partners? I just want to kind of understand a bit more on the on the Indian landscape here. Yeah. 
Rakesh, are you taking that question? Yes, I'll take it. Uh, thank you for your question, Sarthak. In India at the moment, we are fairly at the beginning of, beginning of this. And in fact, our footprint into India started with ISPIC 2020, uh, 2021. And uh, at the moment, we are in talks with uh, governments, uh, supermarket chains, and a couple of major uh, FMCG uh, manufacturers. In, uh, to answer your question about the limitations we've had for logistics, we have not reached that stage yet. And uh, we've not reached that stage yet, but uh, we have a fair understanding of how things work. And the biggest limitation we see is the fragmentation of the market. But uh, in terms of challenge, we, we have a fair idea of how to tackle it and go ahead with it. Um, no, no follow-up questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sarthak. So my next question would be from Karan. Hi, Karan. Yeah, hi, hi, guys. A um, couple of questions. Um, I saw there was a monthly uh, revenue being booked. What, what is the actual monthly run rate at the moment? And what would be your deliverables for December 2020, uh, 22, uh, end of this year, and what be the funding required to achieve that? And the third question is, I saw that there was something mentioned about licensing production to a plant in the Middle East. Uh, why the Middle East? Um, and uh, what, is the, what is the plan? What, what is the rational, rational thinking behind that? Thank you very much for those questions. Um, actually, the fact of the franchise uh, production in the Middle East it will supply the demand of a current request for quotation that was placed for $35,000 in monthly recurring revenue that we, were, we have been working to scale our production to, to achieve that. That's just the natural course of our milestones. And the reason for the Middle East, to be entirely honest with you, it's, it just happened that one contact said, I want to have the franchise for the region of Lebanon, Palestine, and, and Jordan. And, and he has a background 20 years working with the Coca-Cola company and, and other companies in the food and beverage sector. So we said he's a good fit to, to put the production in place over there. And the, and the CapEx, the investment he's making is of $92,000 for that purpose. And what would be your deliverables by end of this year, like I said, and, and what are the funding based on what kind of funding? By, by half of this year, we expect to have uh, to, to be supplying uh, $35,000 in monthly recurring revenue worth uh, product. So that would be six by 35. Um, I don't know, so somewhere around 220,000. No, that's, without, that's without any equity investment into your company or you require... Without, without any equity investment because it's a franchise in a shared revenue model and we don't want to have capex uh, like fundraising for capex because it's depreciated over time we want to have a very healthy ebitda and ebit over the course of years fantastic thank you so one last question from sonia yeah, just a basic question um so for both the products that we have concentrated flavors and protein isolate so are these the ingredients that we are uh, introducing as a new ingredient in the market for the plant-based products or are we replacing the existing um, you know, solutions available? So it's really debatable whether it is the product itself is new because essentially it's a dehydrated mushroom that we can further extract or not. But the innovation resides in the fact that we can decrease the cost of producing fresh oyster mushrooms up to 200 times, depending on some markets, which allow us to use it as a pulverized base that can be used as either a flavor enhancer or as a texturizer to replace the meat experience for, for the alternative food sector. Right, and of course the protein isolate uh, ha has some environmental advantages over any other type of vegan protein. Okay, and uh, what categories have we um, experimented this, both the products for? Alternative meats, um, soups, creams, and baked goods as well. Like for example, we, and we even launched a B2C uh, vegan cookie with just six, six ingredients. All of them organic, locally sourced, and with our ingredient, we even replace the, the salt in the, in the cookies. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Team Phototech, for your um, uh, very engaging Q&A. Uh, and with this, we'll move on to the second team. Um, our second team for the pitch today is Team Next X, and their tagline is No Day Without One. It's a plant-based egg-focused uh, startup with Amay Gonekar and Prakar Shipulkit as its core members. 
Prakash is the co-founder and chief of innovation, uh, a chef, entrepreneur, and food enthusiast uh, with seven years experience at Five Star Hotels, and also a food scientist uh, in his own, in his you know um, own time. At the same time, Amay is a co-founder, operations head, and professional with almost fifteen years of exper- expertise in food manufacturing plants, and loves to travel and experience various cuisines. So uh, let's hear from Team Nextex. Namaste. From team next days. Only rekindle your taste buds, but it's also great for your body and the environment. Imagine indulging into your favorite scrambled egg. to replicate the two major components of an egg, eliminating all the ills of an egg while keeping the functionality and the nutrition intact. Using food technology research from some of the sharpest minds in India, we are parents in India. Fish into a gastronomic experience. We are targeting 600 million flexitarians and vegetarians I personally can't hear it. Sorry. Yeah, Sardal, there's no sound. <laughs> no sound. Other egg-based food without the guilt of consuming cholesterol and with the guarantee that your food is delicious, healthy, cashew. And I'm from team Next Eggs. Together, we've been working with food for over three decades. We use plants to make food that will not only rekindle your taste buds, but is also great for your body and the environment. Imagine indulging into your favorite scrambled egg, French toast, pancakes, sponges, pound cakes, macaroons, and other egg-based food without the guilt of consuming cholesterol, and with the guarantee that your food is delicious, healthy, sustainable, and completely vegetarian. We intend to create a two-part solution to replicate the two major components of an egg, eliminating all the ills of an egg while keeping the functionality and the nutrition intact. Using food technology research from some of the sharpest minds in India, we are able to leverage our proprietary process to repurpose protein from indigenous grain and convert them into functional plant-based alternatives. So the real magic happens when a chef elevates a humble dish into a gastronomic experience. We are targeting 600 million flexitarians and vegetarians in India before we expand to other countries. We were inspired to take part in the India Smart Protein Innovation Challenge because we were eager to collaborate with like-minded individuals, learn from them, and build something together for a sustained living. Now, let us take you through the problem that led us to create a product that would address that problem and then take you through a little bit about our market on to which we intend to take the product to and our business. India is a nation of multiple dishes, and we wanted to simply create a pure, sustainable, nutritious, and indulgent uh, alternative to egg yolks and egg whites. Because of its diversity, not one product could serve uh, all kinds of dishes. Hence, we decided to create a two-part product. According to GFI's data, 63% of Indians are very likely to adopt plant-based alternatives that gave us validation that there was a market for it in our country. Our product is going to be made in three different stages, where in the first stage, we are going to have a powdered version of the product that the consumer would reconstitute in their own houses conveniently with water and oil. 
And in the next stage, we intend to have a ready-to-use solution from straight from a retail pack. And in the final stage, you'll be seeing something that's very similar to a real egg with a specified egg yolk floating in an egg white-like liquid. So we wanted to basically give all the creative uh, freedom to any cook and any foodie and hence allow our plant-based egg to be used in multiple different applications. And that's what we've tried to do and make it the obviously better choice. Our product is primarily made from five major components, which is proteins, which serve as the base of the formulation and is really important for the core nutrition properties. We use uh, colors that are naturally extracted from turmeric and carrots. We use flavors that are all natural and give you a top note and aroma and even an aftertaste after you've swallowed the product and fats that basically improve the mouthfeel functionality of the product. And then finally, gelling agents, which form the smallest component, but give the very important coagulating properties and binding properties of an egg. The manufacturing process is very simple. Then you would be receive the raw material and store it. Post which it would be sterilized, blended, homogenized, and packed in MAP, primary packaging, secondary tertiary packaging, it would be stored and distributed. We would have an average target value of 528 to 600 rupees, which is for two dozen. And we, our target group would be flexitarians, adventurous vegetarians, athletes, kids and elderly, elderly with protein requirement, or people with allergies. Today, the egg is costing five to seven rupees, and our current costing would come around 20 to 25 rupees. The way we would be bringing down the cost from 2025 to eight is to scale up from current one ton per day to 10 tons per day. The expenses that we are looking at are in three stages. In the first stage, we are looking at around two and a half crores, second stage about nine crores, and third stage about 60 crores. The detail working is as shown to you. We would also be expanding in three phases. The first phase being 10 million people across eight major cities of India. Phase two would be 100 million people across 50 cities in India. And the third phase would be Pen India and targeting around 800 million people. Our strategy would be by owning the customer to direct, direct acquisition through our site. We would also be looking at expansion through other e-retailers. And our distribution strategy would be dry products from central location and the wet products through refrigerated last mile delivery. Our SWOT analysis for our business looks like this, where our strength is majorly into the culinary and manufacturing experience. We have an opportunity where there is a large range of product across various food groups. The weakness would be that the we have a limited cold chain logistic infrastructure and threads is a lot of large multinationals are flooding the market. As you see, this is our team. And our ask is a capital of pre-seed 1 million USD. The second stage uh, seeding of about 4 million, 3 to 4 million. And series A is where we are looking at about 35 million USD. Primarily, most of the cost would go into manufacturing and developing product and product innovation center and also distribution through cold chain retail. As you see, the future of eggs is here and it is made with plants. We have also mapped a lot of our competitors. Thank you for being so patient with us. Namaste. And now we are open for all your questions. Namaste. All right, fantastic. So um, thank you so much for that pitch, Prakarshi and Amay. Um, now we'll move on to judges for the Q&A. And we have uh, six minutes for the Q&A. Um, so we'll be able to take three to four questions. Who would like to go first? Okay, great. Siddharth. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the pitch. Uh, it's a very interesting space, plant-based egg. And you know, you've seen one company abroad that has been the category Creator and pioneer for plant based egg, which is uh, Eat Just with their Just Egg. And I'm sure, I'm sure you know all about them. Uh, in India, also, there are a couple of players and all over the world that are popping up now to take, uh, to take market share. My question to you is how will you compete with uh, the players that have, an, have a head start in terms of 
uh, and how how will your product be superior in which ways in terms of you know both the product itself nutrition wise taste wise distribution marketing uh, and all the things that re required for us right thank you for that question sudar <clears throat> So it'll be really hard to compete with them. I know it's a valid question. Just as just X has spent about a hundred million in their product development, if I'm not mistaken. So it it might not be possible to spend that much money, or maybe we don't really need that much money. We believe that we'll be able to create a cheaper solution, or a solution that's more economically viable, more sustainable, actually, and uses in local indigenous grains that are readily available. so that's what we believe is going to be our uh, sort of play on how we are going to compete with these guys we have a market that's very price sensitive and eggs are loved by everyone because they are quick convenient and nutritious so we hope to make it also economically efficient and that's going to be our major uh, sort of uh, advantage so that's i was just trying to understand the, uh, sorry if i can follow up quickly just wanted to understand so how much taste wise because they spend 100 you know the bigger guys have spent a lot of money on will yours taste wise not be as close to a traditional egg uh, since you'll be pricing much lower uh well i'm a perfectionist i'd like it to taste better uh, i i've cooked a lot of eggs in my life but right now we feel that we're 70 to 80% there uh, of course i mean we're not at the at the absolute epitome of what we want to be in terms of a product uh but yeah we are fairly certain that we can get there it's about getting better ingredients it's about getting a better facility and so on so uh you know once we have those things in place but we believe that as other uh, strength is that we can quickly evolve we very very quickly you know rework our formulations quickly are able to adapt and uh you know based on supply chain of ingredients we are able to just see what fits and just you know modify and take it as we go along okay so uh thank you for answering that question prakashi my next question would be from divya thanks for the presentation uh, i'm just wondering eggs have such a versatile range of applications how how do you imagine to be able to tackle that problem in terms of application with one or two products maybe thank you thank you for that question it's a very valid question one could spend two lifetimes in just studying about everything about a chicken egg and it will still be less and we're not trying to imitate everything 80 to 90% of dishes that are made from eggs are have very very simple functionalities that they re require eggs to fulfill in that recipe right uh, it's aeration or its mouth feel or its uh, solidifying uh, or uh, binding properties we know that most eggs are used to make simple stuff like french toast pancakes and you know cakes maybe cookies so we want to take all the major primary foods that are made with eggs and we want to make a solution that could be made into a bhurji or an omelet and eventually could be put in a cake as well and all you need to do is it's a one is to one replacement to a conventional egg yolk or a conventional egg white and when mixed together to a conventional egg so that's that's the idea but in a, just a quick follow up in application though there are so many properties that egg uh, provide and uh, i'm i'm still having difficulty understanding how there will um this would be possible and 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 do you plan to do this in house uh, are you going to set up your own manufacturing facility or are you in uh, planning to outsource production so yeah initially we do plan to set up our own innovation center we would have to outsource okay. a lot of ingredients we can't manufacture everything ourselves however we've done some trials and we've got some really promising results where we've replaced eggs one is to one in a recipe for a sponge for a brownie for a cake for a cookie and for in recipes like pancakes and waffles and it's worked just as fine and the same formulation if you just cook it directly you can make a bhurji or an omelet so we've got some really promising results however you know uh, we'd really like to improve it before and get to a point where it's uh, absolutely like you know acceptable by everyone before we get to market okay thank you thank you for that question divya so my last question in the interest of time would be from pooja uh, Pooja, go ahead. Thanks for that. Um, just quick question because we actually have an investment in Southeast Asia. Uh, trying to understand the go-to market strategy because um, historically, what we've seen is anybody who's tried to go D to C um, has not really uh, got the unit economics right if they did it online. So, mm -hmm. just would be great to understand how you're thinking about that. we've done all of our unit economics planning and we've done a lot of this leg work and uh, our plan is to maybe take a three pronged approach to be honest we do realize that uh, it might be 
hard to build faith in a consumer and make them adopt on a very large scale you can get early adopters but you know i i do understand the challenges but we definitely believe that we have a certain strength in terms of reaching out to qsrs hotels and maybe other food service outlets and we believe that taking this two prong approach first with uh, qsrs and hotels and restaurants and then the third with uh, institutional caterers caterers of colleges large uh, you know offices and so on so we believe that once you get used to the taste or once you get to feel comfortable with this product you know it will be hard to sell an expensive product off the shelf where you have to go home and then figure out how to use it and then make it and then you make it and it doesn't come out right so that's a big challenge but once you've been familiarized at a restaurant you know it makes it much more easy for you to make that buying decision so that's why we've got this three pronged approach to go to market uh, you know yeah understood thank you fantastic thank you prakarshi that's that's thank you. your time uh, thank you so much for the q and a we'll move on to our next third pitch for the day uh, from team selace uh, team selace is focused on fermentation derived protein and ingredients consisting of uh, yesh wazir and sagarika puri um, their tagline is exploring new folds and selace is using a computational approach to explore novel paths for protein discovery so on to the next pitch Hi everyone, Yash here from Team Selix. The UN Panel on Climate Change in their new report have said that many of the impacts of global warming are now simply irreversible. Food is a very real driver of climate change. The world's food production is responsible for about 30% of all greenhouse gas emissions. Unfortunately, food is not optional. But emissions from different foods vary a lot. Animal source proteins are the biggest offenders and in general suck for the environment. To address this, we have seen people and companies come up with plant-based alternatives. However, these plant proteins often don't taste right. Not that they taste bad, just not right. Or they may not be as nutritious as their animal counterparts. Some companies have solved for both of these issues, but as a result have ended up make, making their products too expensive. What I mean to say is that a lot of work still needs to be done. Now, there are a different set of people who think that instead of trying to make plant proteins behave like animal proteins, why don't we take these animal proteins and grow them directly in a lab? I like to call call this the copy paste approach. Biotech for decades has copied and pasted biological function from nature to the lab. Regardless of whatever approach you take, before you can even start making your product you are going to be spending a lot of time and resources on trying to find the right protein we say why restrict ourselves to what we find in nature let's make better proteins we propose to move away from a copy paste approach to a more design oriented approach proteins are complex but use of computational methods for protein discovery have now become possible we want to help companies make ingredients they can find in nature Unfold is a computational biology platform for the discovery of novel proteins. It uses machine learning to predict proteins that best match the client's requirements. Unfold takes as input physical and chemical properties and predicts the corresponding protein sequence. On the basis of which it determines one or more gene sequences encoding for the target protein. So, for example, if a client comes to us and says that they want a protein that is stable at 80 degrees and has the mouthfeel of milk and has function x or property y these would be the input specifications unfold will then predict and give you a protein sequence that best matches your input this is what i meant when i said we are going for a more design oriented approach unfold will help us design new proteins coming to our business model we are going for a b2b model where the client comes to us with their requirements and we help them do the research into designing their product the main revenue streams will be licensing and research contracts the competition can broadly be classified into four categories with parameters being computational versus traditional and a design oriented approach versus a copy based approach as shown on the screen selace has the potential to be a leader in the computational as well as design oriented approach space with the only promising competitor at the moment that we know of being gelto on taking an in depth look into what separates us from our competition we have unique value to provide in terms of our geographical location and integration with existing technologies 
India provides distinct advantages in terms of cost, skill set, and time to product delivery. Our platform will allow companies to use their existing wet lab technologies and expertise to unlock novel paths for the production of proteins. The all protein market as of 2019 was valued at $2.2 billion and is projected to grow to at least $300 billion in about a decade. Here's a snapshot of the all protein landscape to help you visualize the current market. There are no signs to suggest it is going to stop growing anytime soon. Our vision for the next year is to improve accuracy and integration of our software with design tools for a more seamless transition for our clients from computer to benchtop. We will work closely with clients and expect to enter the market with our first novel proteins by 2024. In the long term, we see ourselves expanding our services and exploring entry into other industries as well. Coming to our team, me and Sagarika together form the team behind Cellings. Together, we have a broad range of expertise across biology, medicine, AI, and machine learning. But what truly brings us together is our desire to seek solutions in technology to solve for a sustainable future. That was us and our vision. Now we want to hear about you. Reach out to us to discuss more. All right. Thank you so much for that uh, nice pitch, uh, Yash and Sagareka. Um, our first question is from Dr. Hao. So Dr. Hao, on to you. Thank you. Uh, very nice pitch. Um, so, you know, a very general question. So uh, what kind of platform, uh, I guess two questions, you know, uh, what is your platform and, um, you know, what have you produced so far? Hi, Dr. Hao. Thank you for that question. Um, so our platform is essentially going to be um, some, something where you can input your specifications and you get an output as a gene sequence as well as a structure. Uh, so uh, that is what we are working on. And for now, we do have a working model and it has uh, a couple of inputs, but it's just a, like a small working model. And to test the accuracy of this model and to set, see verify its accuracy, we would need to go and test all the physical and chemical properties of at least 100,000 proteins in a lab. Um, which is what we are planning to do uh, we, with the funding that we would pr procure from this challenge as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any follow-up question, Dr. Ha? Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, in terms of protein production, so um, are you going to be using an organism to produce it, mammalian cell, bacteria, or yeast? Because they have, uh, the other thing that you must know is the post-translation uh, modification of the protein as well. Um, so right now we're just planning on trying to predict a protein sequence for target identification. And this will then be given to the company. And then based on that, they will try to pr like produce it or manufacture it themselves. So we won't be producing the uh, protein. We'll just be helping them discover it because about 25% of R&D just goes into like finding the right protein, finding what you need to make and what your product needs. So, Okay. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Next question from Sarthak. Hi guys. Um, quick question. Just want to get more clarity on the entire user journey, right? And please feel free to take as many examples as you can. Who is the right entity that's coming to you uh, to create these proteins? Um, and I do have a follow-up question, but I'll wait for you uh, guys to answer. Um, so right now, uh, we are still, we just have a working model and we need to verify its accuracy. And for that, we need to go to the lab and test like minimum 100,000 proteins. And we need, it is expensive and time consuming. So right now we don't have any customers. So that like. What kind of, but hypothetically, what, who's the right ideal customer for you okay. uh, considering the Indian landscape or, or not? Um, just want to help and visualize who's actually using your platform, right? Okay, got it. Um, so we are, uh, so our, like, we'll be targeting food tech companies and like basically anyone who wants like a particular protein, like for their product, that will be our target market. And then universities, academicians, and like academia, I know researchers can utilize our platform for protein discovery. 
Thank you. And perhaps all the cohort and track too, right? Uh, like earlier, we were discussing about egg proteins, right? Every every startup in the smart protein community in India would perhaps be uh, finding this quite helpful and, and globally as well. Um, so next question is from Sonia. Yes. So in case of applications that uh, you might have identified during your market research, could you give one or two examples of what are the challenges that the existing players are facing where they can use this uh, solution being built by you for their, uh, you know, so for their innovative purposes. I mean, where do you see the application of this technology? Um, so if there is a company that wants a product, like they want like a particular property for their product and they're not able to find the right protein or maybe if they find the right protein, they're not able to like culture it. They are not able to grow it in their host. So in such a case, we could help with that. We could help them find maybe alternatives to like those proteins. Thank you. Uh, last question from Sar. Uh, we can take one more. Sarthak, uh, we'll get back to you after the best question. The okay, sure. Great, thanks. Um, I'm, I'm just curious how you're going about this. How are you collating all of this information you need to feed into your platform? What is your game plan there? Hi, Vivya. So we have a database, uh, which for now, for starters, we used Uniprod's database, uh, which had these specifications. Uh, we took, we had to do some, you know, cleaning up of data and then some validation to understand that, okay, we'll have like four or five functions that we'll start off with just to create a POC. And mm -hmm. using that, we had mostly numerical data and that we could input into an ML model. And that's how we have generated our idea as well to expand on this particular thing, add more functionalities, add more parameters, and then basically make it some, so that it's a complete solution instead of just people asking for two or three functions. So the ideal plan is to have like a massive database, which would in itself be uh, a huge, uh, it would be like our proprietary thing uh, which which would be very beneficial to society because it, it would actually have proteins which probably wouldn't even have been discovered yet. All right, thank you. Okay, last core question for 30 seconds from Sarthak if you have a follow-up. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's more of a fundamental question around, it seems like you're more of a service-based uh, startup. And so I'm trying to understand how does this work at scale when it's not just the two of you handling a thousand clients, right? Because um, it seems like there's a lot of contractual agreements that you're personally going to have to sit through. So how do you automate this at, at that level uh, is, is one of the questions that I had. So I think that's a great question. Um, I, I think that one of the main, uh, you know, focus areas of my life is how do I get out of every job that I have? And to do that, I try to uh, essentially uh, figure out ways to expand and scale up in a very you know, sustainable manner and to automate some stuff that uh, would help us go through this. Of course, external hires would help in this process. As you said, service-based companies obviously need to have uh, sales engineers and uh, customer success managers and all of that would also be true. But I think that uh, in the base of it, we need to, the way that we're going to scale it up would be that the platform in itself would have like a self-explanatory, a very intuitive feel, uh, easy to walk through, easy to use. And that is our goal for this project. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Uh, I would just like to add to that. So Sagarika is actually an automation engineer and we and any gaps in our skill set we plan to fill by hiring the right people. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, okay. thank you guys. Great. Thank you so much for that Q&A, uh, Team Salace. We'll move on to the next team, which is Team Beta MG, uh, which is a team focused on plant-based dairy consisting of Ayush Panara and Sadev Dang. And uh, their tagline is making vegan eating simple. Uh, at Team BM, uh, Beta MG, uh, there are two enthusiasts, Ayush and Sadev, uh, and they supplement each other's knowledge of computer science and life sciences. Uh, using these two skill sets as their core value proposition, they are making uh, plant-based foods more affordable and taste even better than animal-derived alternatives. So on to the pitch from Team Beta MG. Hello, everyone. My name is Ayush Panara, and thank you so much for this opportunity. We are Team Beta MG, and we are a SDG focused startup trying to make plant-based daily alternatives affordable through our scientifically backed process. So to start with, 
800 million people across India are lactose intolerant. And the three key reasons. Low shelf life, higher packaging cost, and higher logistical cost. Seeing this, it became quite evident what our solution should focus on. And thus, that's exactly what we are doing by developing a low cost, high shelf life, nutritious milk powder. The reason we chose this solution is because it is able to counter all the problems mentioned before at one go high shelf life, low packaging cost, and pan India delivery from the starting itself. But we wouldn't be able to do all this without our ingredients and techniques. And we have arrived at these things through data analysis because here we have, we have been able to determine suitable plants which were also underutilized even though they showed promising nutritional milk replication profiles. This data analysis also helped us to develop all of our products without usage of any gluten, transfer, preservative or GMO. So what we do is a simple four step process. First, find plants that biologically mimic functional milk. Second, select plants from those that are scalable. Third, use slow cooking methods to naturally remove the primary taste. And fourth, grind them. Talking in more detail in step one, we use data scraping to get a know-how on the nutritional and essential components that are responsible for giving milk its signature functionality and then try find plants and seeds that also contain such properties. After finding such plants, these are further curated through clinical pharmacists to check their feasibility in step two. Once approved for stage three, food science cooking techniques as you can see on the screen, are used to remove the pungent and bitter taste of the ingredients. So let me clear things out for you with an example. A, bio a biological property was found similar between Moringa and milk. The Moringa seeds also showed good feasibility. Thus, a slow cooking technique particular to the Moringa seed was found to mask its original bitter taste and after which it was grinded. But don't worry, for our consumers it is simple. Just mix it, blend it, strain it and of course enjoy it. So now as you can see on the screen, oh, the, all the process that we just said, they are just going step by step. Mix it, strain it and just enjoy it. Here comes a before after photo to also give you a better know how of how the product changes after you just mix it, strain it and enjoy it. Apart from milk, we have also developed other processes such as vegan cookies and vegan MVM premix. And once we have been able to scale all our currently three products, we also plan to develop other dairy alternatives. Talking about about our timeline, we were first incorporated in August 2019, after which we went to Europe for our R&D. We also completed our first pilot there and then used the feedback we got out there to complete our successful pilot back in India. Improvement in the pilots conducted both at both places helped us to secure our first order worth 10,000 rupees. However, the delivery revealed many of our shortcomings. And thus, we had to extend our R&D for another 3-4 months. Finally, solving all the hurdles, we were now able to bag 3 consecutive B2B tie-ups in 4 months. Talking about our business model, our key focus areas for our revenue of milk are B2B tie-ups with vegan bakeries, vegan QSR, vegan ice creams and other FMCG manufacturers. Our packaging, labels, sizes and logistical supply chain partners all have been identified and can also be seen on the screen. We have also been able to turn down our unit economics to know where and how much our money is going. And based on this, we plan 
to use the money we receive from GFI. You might have seen that we are currently spending more on marketing. That is because as you can see the market is big and our revenues have been increasing steadily. And not only that, the market, pers mar mar market perspective also shows that we are at a better position and thus we would try to grab every potential opportunity we can. And also in order, in order to grab such an opportunity, every opportunity that comes, we have a team that can supplement each other's skills. And not only that, if in case anywhere across the line, we step down, we have a team from, we have a mentor pool from each area to help us, right from ingredient to operations. We hope that through this presentation, we have been able to express our passion towards smart protein and vegan revolution to you guys and hope to use your network to reach greater heights. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I. Uh... Yeah, Sadev and Ayush, thank you so much for the pitch. It was uh, really well done. Uh, we'll, we'll go on to judges. So who would like to ask the question first to team of Ayush and Sadev? Great. Uh, Dr. Hao, we'll go with you yes. first. Sure. Thank you very much for the pitch. Um, a couple of things here. Uh, have you considered fat? Because, you know, lipids is actually quite important in the, in the milk. Yeah, we have uh, considered fat and uh, the seeds, the raw materials which we are taking have a uh, like a, a good amount of uh, fatty acids and uh, the consistency is maintained through that fatty acids making emulsion with the water. Uh, so based upon that, uh, our consistency is similar to the milk. And like that was the main reason why we used the uh, web scrapping, so which, you know, we don't have to manually go through every research paper, but uh, you know, use the technology to find out what are the essential things needed and then work on that. Sure. Okay, thank you. Well, obviously uh, we cannot taste the product, so we cannot judge, but um, uh, why, so are you selling the powder and then so the consumer will have to buy it, grind it, put water in it, and then like, you know, uh, filter it before they drink it or is it, yeah, or yeah, you going to be to be? Yeah, we are selling the powder. Uh, the three main reasons are for that is uh, it's uh, more logistically viable and uh, for B2B uh, a thing, uh, it's more viable to supply the powder and they build, uh, they make it in bulk rather than just supplying uh, like liquid, uh, which has low shelf life. Mm -hmm. okay. So like uh, we are mainly focusing currently with powder. We are mainly focusing on B2B only because okay. it is uh, more helpful for B2B. Okay, I guess then once you make the shelf life is super short, right? Because they're using non-sterile water or like any water. So uh, it's an instant use shelf, kind of thing, right? The shelf life uh, in the liquid form is comparable to normal milk. It's uh, like uh, three to four days. Okay, got it. Thank you. It's a quick follow-up question. What about reconstitution uh, to f ask on what Dr. Howe was talking about? Is it... Um, can you just talk us through the reconstitution process and how, uh, you know, uniform or homogeneous is it compared to, you know, dairy from cow or buffalo? Uh, homogeneous as in like how well it mixes with other... With other water. Things. Yeah. Just reconstituting the powder, how, how easy that process is for end consumer. Yeah, for end consumer, as I said, it's, uh, for, it's very simple as in the process of how we make tea. Like you, we first need to, we first boil the tea, tea seeds, and then we strain it. And then the, our tea is ready. We follow a similar process where instead of boiling, you just need to grind, uh, blend it yeah. and then strain it. Yeah. And then your milk is ready. And like, uh, that was the key reason uh, why we were able to achieve three B2B clients back to back in three months after our two pilots. Because what they did was they made the milk in bulk at night and you know so after tomorrow in the morning they can just use that milk for their every other products makes sense and yeah for a market like india refrigeration costs and cold chain is a huge problem uh, yeah, compared to the west so certainly i see the value so puja on to you for the next question all right thank you um, you know, very interesting to see that you guys are actually making a powder out of it. So um, just also trying to understand what are the uh, main ingredients that you're using? Because 
in plant based milk i think historically the problem that we've seen is when you try and mix it with either a chai or a coffee the consistency changes right it's not the same as cow milk or buffalo milk which indians are used to so would be good to just understand um what do guys are thinking about that so uh, that's uh, like uh, sarun can we share the screen so that you know we have the ingredients ready so that we can in the ppt itself so maybe we yeah, can sure. so Mr. so yeah while you are answering sadev can just share the screen yeah sure and also sure. follow up to that is a uh, quick follow up to that is what what would you be pricing this at um one serve as in one packet so basically uh yeah on, uh, we are currently using uh, seven ingredients our seven key ingredients that you can see brazil nuts sunflower seeds watermelon seeds moringa coconut salt and misal these are our seven ing ingredients that we are using only and uh, second in terms of mixability if you were if you, uh, if you see the video in which we are making the powder you yeah. we have at the last we have mixed both milk and the coffee to show you how well it mixes with the powder like this unfortunately this is a pdf so we won't be able that's, to that's perfectly fine i can take that offline okay. yeah. and for the last part uh, uh, the pricing part here is the pair here is we will be selling it into three main packaging sizes 100 gram 200 250 gram and 500 gram and the price per liter that we will be charging is around uh, 110 110 rupees is our gross manufacturing cost and the supply chain comes around 160 so it total comes around 170 but uh, within in this year we plan to take our gross manufacturing cost within 100 rupees so that we become even more affordable and if we get even more order like if we get yeah. currently we are selling 30 liters of 30 kg of milk powder in one month if we are able to reach around 75 kg more than 75 kg per month powder selling then we can decrease our powder manufacturing cost mm. less than 100 rupees per liter would uh, be to uh, consumer it would be around uh, 1 180 to 190 rupees per liter understood thank you thank you thank you team vita mg uh, for this q and a uh, we'll move on to the next uh, pitch for the day um, so our next team for today's pitch is team mycoation uh, team mycoation is focusing on fermentation derived protein and ingredients consisting of yashaswini balraju and punarva hb and they uh, the tagline is empowering better food Uh, Dr. Yashaswini uh, is a co-founder and chief product officer at Mycovation, responsible for product and process improvement and development. And she holds a PhD in biotechnology from University of Mysore and specializes in protein engineering. Punarva HB is currently interning at Mycovation. She is pursuing her BTech in biotechnology from Pace University, uh, Bangalore. So on to Mycovation. Welcome to my questions presentation for the Indian Smart Protein Innovation Challenge 2021. I'm Dr. Ashwini, co-founder and chief product officer. My question is a biotech startup focused on developing novel ingredients using the configurable mycelium for food and beverage industries. We have a strong team of both business and technical personnel and for ISPIC 21 challenge I'm participating as the chief product officer responsible for product and process development with me I have Ms Purnarva who is currently interning with us and pursuing her BTech in biotechnology from PES University our management team includes Mr Sivasu Sarla our CEO who is a clean tech expert with over 15 years of business and administrative experience and Dr Yongxing Tan a uh, a CTO who holds a PhD from NTU in fermentation technology we are backed by Renergy Venture Studio a support spiral includes advisors dr chetana r senior food technology cftr india dr matthew za food scientist big idea ventures we recently raised investment from trendline cycle food funds and seeds capital and investment arm of enterprise singapore we are currently incubated in cftr india and innovate 360 in singapore our vision is to harness the versatility nutritive value and texture of mycelium to transform food system using fermentation technology our mission is to develop ingredients that are vans vegan affordable nutritious and sustainable our mission aligns with the un global sustainability goals such as zero hunger climate action good health and well-being responsible consumption and production 
Our primary goals focus on changing consumer trends wherein customers are now looking for healthy, vegan and affordable alternatives and the existing alternatives are incomplete wherein they are developed using highly processed ingredients and fail to mimic the taste and texture of the conventional products and at the same time are expensive. Our solution is mycelium based food ingredients. They are fully functional ingredients with upstream fortification due to fermentation process. The process is nature inspired uh, wherein we upcycle food industry waste streams and it can be made affordable due to low cost of raw materials and short production cycles. The whole process is sustainable with limited use of natural resources like water, land and energy and hence can have a better acceptance from the customers. Our process is a micro 3C production stack like configure, construct and consume. In configure, which allows us to combine right mycelial streams along with substrate for fermentation methods and in construct we choose the right of fermentation technology that is the solid state fermentation in this case and the process processing techniques under consume uh, is uniquely designed for ingredients for client based specific needs we are developing ai integrated predictive and optimization platforms over to punarva in continuation with our process development we examine the nutritional aspects of our micro fermented flour we observed an 8% decrease in carbohydrates, a 17% increase in protein, and also an increase in soluble dietary fibers, which promotes digestibility as compared to the standard. Further analysis indicated the inclusion of vitamin B12, along with few interesting secondary metabolites and micronutrients, which are added during fermentation. They increase the functionality of our ingredients. Under physical sensory parameters, the appearance is of a fine dried powder and the color is pale brown with enhanced umami flavor. With this, we have designed the roadmap for product development. Currently, we have attained the nutritional analysis of our product with promising results and are looking into scaling up to a pilot scale. Our product will be ready on the market by the end of second quarter of 2022 for customers. We have laid down the budget and it is estimated around 50 lakh for the product development. We are a B2B company and have developed an application prototype using micro-fermented flour, which is a high-protein alternative vegan meatball. We have characterized this as a product of mix, which is for specialty ingredients and niche products. The global market for specialty ingredients is expected to reach 18 billion US dollars by the year of 2026. We have done a small group of customer validation with key parameters and the results are promising with over 55% likeliness for product purchase based on global impressions. For our go-to-market strategy, we have prepared a database of beneficial food service companies. Next, we would reach out to them and have them try our sample product while offering a value proposition. Finally, we would ask them to provide us with a PO for a minimum quantity. We are Asia's first mycelia-based startup and our direct competitors are in the West. Our USP lies in novel technology, custom solutions, and process optimization for specific strain and substrate combinations. Our geographical market location is APAC, wherein the competitors are mostly from US and Europe. We have currently raised a seed investment of 1.2 million US dollars, whereas our competitors are much more advanced and are in series A and beyond. We are looking for a pilot scaling and equipment fabrication asset technically. Since ours is a B2B company, we are looking for support in connecting with co-creators and for aid in product distributions. We would extend our gratitude to GFI India for organizing the Smart Protein Challenge and providing us with a platform to reach out to our audience. So these are our email IDs and social media handles. Please reach out to us in case of any queries or for co-creations. Thank you. All right, fantastic. So uh, let's have questions for Punarva and Yashiswini. Uh, if you can both switch on your cameras and we'll, we'll get started with who would like to go first. Yeah, Divya. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, just yes. curious, what are your what are your next milestones? What do, what are you hoping to achieve by the end of the year? Uh -huh. Basically, uh, since we are a B two B company, our focus is to connect with the co creators. We are currently in the process of developing uh, our novel ingredients, 
and we have tried to develop a prototype of meatball, wherein we also have a lineup of uh, prototypes that we have tried with different uh, strain and substrate combinations. So by mid year, we want to have a prototype of about four to six products and would like to reach to the co-creators uh, who can de develop it al along with us. Quick follow-up, what kind of uh, product applications have you tested your uh, so mycelium powder? Yeah, basically, uh, right now, uh, we have focused on a health protein bar and uh, vegan meatball like uh, our showcase here in the presentation. And along with, we are also looking at developing a functional beverage. Okay, great. Thank you. Welcome. Great, thank you. Uh, Siddharth? Sure. So if you can tell me what is the most challenging part about being in this business and what step are you taking to overcome that challenge? Uh, so uh, basically, uh, Siddharth, uh, um, the basic challenge that we are facing is limited resources uh, about mycelium uh, per se and uh, the applications that we can develop. Uh, because my C team mycelium, uh, so team microvision has an upstream uh, speciality. That is, we are fermentation uh, technologists. So we lack uh, food uh, product development or food manufacturing experience. So that is the reason we want to set ourselves as a B2B manufacturer and look at co-creators who can help us develop this. So these are the two challenges that we are currently facing. Along with that, uh, we are also looking at uh, uh, like designing the bioreactors. Dr. Hao, next question from you. Thank you very much for your presentation. So I guess uh, two parts. First is uh, uh, IP in strain. So do you have IP for your uh, uh, mycelium? No, we don't have uh, any IPs. Uh, we are expecting an IP to come out from our process because uh, each strain is unique and uh, the substrate and strain optimization could be a uh, process IP. And along with that, we are looking for uh, trade secrets to come out uh, of the application development. But this will be uh, with, along with the co-creators. Okay, uh, are you a little bit concerned that if you not, uh, you know, don't have an IP on the strain that you know other company can sue you for uh, using the you know the the strain for food product? And um, not essentially because all our strains are grass certified strains. Though I mean we don't have any unique strains per se and we have a direct claim over that. So the whole thing uh, or the potential IP could be on the process itself. Uh, so it is not strain specific. So Understood. the optimization is unique to us. We have uh, currently worked on to reduce the production cycle uh, to less than 10 days. So that would be an advantage for us. Okay. Um, I guess the other question is, uh, you know, since you're already producing uh, uh, products, right? Uh, taste, have you tried your product? And how does it taste? Uh, so basically, we've done a uh, small customer validation uh, with over 30 participants. And uh, uh, taste-wise, it has a unique umami flavor, uh, especially for the uh, vegan meatball. But however, what we lack is uh, the right texture. We've tried to develop the texture, but we want to improve the texture of the product. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you for those questions, Dr. Hao. Uh, next question is from Sonia. Um, thanks for the presentation. Just one quick question, since uh, we are talking here about the speciality ingredients market. For each of the product, uh, the proportion of the floor that uh, you provide would be different across the categories. So, for example, uh, in the meatball category, what is the percentage that forms uh, part of your product versus the rest of the ingredients that are used? Uh, good question, Sonia. Thanks uh, for the question. Basically, right now, uh, like you mentioned, each of the product will have different inclusions of our ingredient. Uh, for the meatball, we have tried to use at least 50% of our ingredient, along with the conventional meatball uh, ingredients at the moment. And uh, for other uh, put, uh, prototypes, uh, it goes into different ratio. Okay. And just a follow-up, I mean, uh, do we have attained any external validation for the uh, floor that we have developed? Uh, right now, no. Uh, we are in talks, but we don't have an external validation yet. Okay. Thank you so much. Welcome. Perfect. Thank you so much, Team Microvation. We'll move on to the next 
pitch uh, and we'll take a quick break after that. Um, so the next pitch from team number six, Clever Meat, is uh, focused on cultivated meat and seafood. And it consists of team uh, C.A. Nitin Shetty and Dr. Swapnil Kamle and Mr. Shailendra Rane. And their tagline is shaping the new era of meat. Um, Nathan is a chartered accountant with management consulting background. Um, um, a doctor with PhD in cellular biology is Dr. Swapnil and a vaccine developer uh, with expertise in protein biology. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Shailendra Rane have come together uh, with protein biology experience to solve the cultivated seafood problem. So let's hear from team. Clever meat. Hi, I'm Nathan Shetty. I was a non-vegetarian, turned myself into a vegetarian around five years ago, primarily for social and spiritual reasons. Having said this, I do miss my favorite meat and seafood cuisines. I've tried plant-based meat, but the taste profile, the texture doesn't remind me quite of my erstwhile favorite dishes. So when I met Swapnil and Shailendra, it was like I felt empowered that with their technical expertise and my financial and managerial background, we can empower a growing majority or 70% plus population of India who are non-vegetarians, but who also are increasingly becoming concerned with the host of issues plaguing the seafood industry, namely protein deficiency because of the cost involved, plastic and other pollutants damaging the seafood profile, animal cruelty with regards to aquaculture and mass fishing, the unsustainable way in which fishing is done, but most importantly, the plant-based alternatives do not provide a satisfactory taste profile. Their complex or unfamiliar composition for the consumer has created a hindrance for accepting these all protein solutions. We are therefore in the perfect time zone where we can offer cultivated meat as a suitable option that can overcome the limitations of all protein alternatives. Our simple solution is cultivated seafood. Literally taking a few cells from the animals and cultivating the same in bioreactors to grow them into meat. Similar to the greenhouse technology that has been in use for ages now. Here, we will be using scaffolds derived from commonly available plants, grow cells in it, shape it up so that they give the same nutrients, the same taste and an allergen-free experience. Our production process of cultivating meat is very well described in this image from advanced science. Within this frame, our focus in is on using various types of scaffolds. Parallel to scaffold development are the cells and the media that are to be utilized in different phases. We have adapted this workflow for developing our prawns. Our research pipeline has identified suitable plant sources process them to have an optimal pore size of 50 to 150 microns. These will be adapted for cell lines derived from prawns. These small blocks will be clubbed using bottom-up approaches to make final whole cut meat. Our initial research on some plants has been presented here. Our processes on different plants show the pore size in the required range of 50 to 150 microns. The drawings below highlight the size and the area available for the cells to grow upon. The market that we'll be targeting would be the Indian shrimp and prawns market. And our initial target would be to gain at least 1% market share of this market. We are amongst the early birds that are trying to catch the cultivated seafood worm here. And we are amongst the first few companies in India to enter the cultivated seafood market. Our product roadmap is something like this. We expect our uh, cell line and media optimization to be completed by the end of this year and our scaffolds ready for commercial launch early next year. In 2024, we would be having our POC of Clever Shrimp and Clever Prawns ready with focus primarily on capacity expansion. Future products for 2025 include other shellfish products, namely crab and lobsters. Post the launch of our POC, our primary focus would be to reduce our per unit costing to eventually make it palatable for the Indian mass consumers. Hence, we would be starting initially with the export markets and with price reduction, we would tie up with hotels and culinary experts across various states in India to integrate our products into the different delicacies across India. 
Our initial target consumers belong to the age group of 18 to 40, who are quality, health, taste, and environment conscious, love their seafood, and reside primarily in the coastal regions of our country. Our funding requirements up until the POC stage comes up to rupees 1.9 crores, primarily consisting of R&D material and equipment cost. Now, why are we the right people to write this story? As previously mentioned too, our team has a great mix of complementing skill sets. Dr. Swapnil has extensive experience in cell culture cultivation and scaffolding, and also the required ability to make a marketable research-based product. Shailendra's expertise lies in molecular and protein biology, as well as bioinformatics, which would be quintessential in crafting clever meats products. And I bring to the team my experience in managing finances, running and consulting businesses, as well as supply chain management experience of a B2B startup that I previously worked for. Also, we are supported by mentors who are industry experts in their domain, who would in turn help us to build Clever Meat, a brand to reckon with in the seafood domain. Now, having said this, we would like to conclude our presentation and would like to thank everyone for your time and would like to throw the dice open for any questions. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Shanathin, Shailendra, and Dr. Swapnil. Um, exciting pitch. So we'll have the first question from Siddharth. Hi, that's really interesting. Thanks. Uh, I have a question on cultivated meat. You know, they say they say price, uh, they say taste is king in this business and price is queen. So I'm sure, you know, with cultivation, taste will not be an issue for you. But with pricing, when will cultivated meat in general you think we'll be able to get price parity and uh, how and when do you expect it to happen and go to market? So uh, thanks a lot for the question, Siddharth. A very pertinent question uh, relevant to the cultivated meat industry. And uh, as per our industry research and sources, uh, right now the cultivated seafood from the companies that have come close to developing a POC are able to produce the same at around $1,000 per kilogram uh, for cultivated seafood, primarily shrimp. And moving ahead by the end of this year, it's expected that that cost will be brought down to around $50 uh, per kg. That's something that we are looking at, at in, in the range of $10 to $15, which according to the kind of progress uh, that we also at the, as a part of the industry we are making, hopefully in the next three to four years, it is estimated that we'll be able to bring the price down to $5 to $10 per kg. And that's somewhere down the line coincid coincides with our uh, roadmap of launching our product somewhere in 2024, uh, wherein we'll be able to achieve a price band of say around 15, 10 to $15. Dollars. Thank you for answering that question, Nitin. Next question is from Karan. Yeah, hi. Um, thanks guys for the you know problem opportunity and the future, but uh, can you be explain a bit more on your on, on the IP on the patent at the moment and uh, which is planned for this year and we'll do a bit of a deep dive into that with respect to your uh, product as well and the IP. Uh, Swapnil, would you like to take that question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, right now we have our uh, product already, uh, our prototype ready with us. Uh, we have to do some... Uh, for the validation with the cell lines. So we are hoping that our IP may come up uh, sometime in, the, in this year. And uh, we also plan to have other resources like the uh, key ingredients coming up as well. So uh, this is right now our plan. Okay, anything to add there further, uh, Shailendra or Nathan? Uh, just to add on to uh, what uh, so yeah actually uh, along with that we are trying to yeah uh, sure. you may proceed yeah yeah so actually we are trying to uh, make our own uh, media for the our cell lines so because uh, right now the, there are the very few medias are available so we are uh, we are planning for that as well and uh, by the end of this year we will be uh, ready with our media as well and uh, we will take the IP for that as well. Karan, anything to follow up on that? And is there any institution you're working with jointly or just you're working alone? Actually, currently we are in a talk with the... Yeah. 
yeah uh, so one is based in the hyderabad and uh, one is in mumbai uh, actually it is also in the cultivated uh, mid section so we are in talk with them but uh, right now we are working in we are we are in the nascent nascent stage right now so yes we are we are uh, thinking to collaborate with the others as well. so just to add on to what shailendra mentioned uh, so as dr swapnil uh, previously mentioned we are uh, in advanced stages of developing our own scaffolds but we are yet to test it out in terms of cell lines and cell media and that's the reason why we have uh, say sort of uh, associated ourselves with a couple of uh, players in the same space in mumbai and hyderabad wherein we are testing our products over there but then at the same point of time as it is of general information that cell line and cell media is pretty costly and that's something that we intend to uh, achieve or say work upon in the later half of this year okay thank you next questions from dr hao so dr hao you obviously have seen uh, you know asia's uh, leading plant, uh, cultivated seafood company in singapore ecosystem so interested to know about your question yeah yeah so uh, yeah more technical right so uh, uh, my first question is uh, are you looking at stem cell or are you looking at primary cell Uh, we are looking at the primary cell. Okay, so you know, uh, I mean, not uh, it's just a comment. I don't think a lot of people have gone this path. Uh, is is you know, uh, go very far with primary cells. So maybe you will be an exception. Uh, there are certain you know issues with primary cells. Uh, stem cell seems to be the you know the more popular path, right? With all the big companies like Shukmi mm-hmm. and all that. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, um, I saw that you're using scaffold. So, have you thought that you know when you put the scaffold into your bioreactor, it will absorb your media, so your taste. You know when you when when you collect your your cells and the scaffold and your scaffold will be plant based scaffold, so it's edible scaffold. Would it would it taste like media? Would it taste? You know, it got a bad taste. Have you thought about that? Uh, this is uh, at this stage. Uh, it will be so early to comment on that. Because uh, we have not tested uh, that completely, uh, so yeah, uh, we are hoping we will uh, try to improve the test. But uh, it is so early to comment on that right now. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Okay. Is anything to add there, Doctor Swapnil? Yeah, actually, it's a good question, uh, Doctor Howe, uh, and uh, we are actually we have tried evaluating uh, with the media, but we have not yet gone to the testing part as yet. Okay. No worries. Okay, great. Thank you. So, uh, anybody, any further questions? Otherwise, we'll move on to the next pitch. Great. All right. So, for our next pitch, uh, we have uh, Team Pilk, which is a team focusing on plant-based dairy, consisting of Kanish Gupta and Abhishek Kumar, and uh, the tagline is Pilk for the people, for the planet. Kanishk is a software engineer turned entrepreneur, and he looks after uh, web design, social and digital marketing, community building, and awareness channels. And Abhishek focuses on um, as a mechanical engineer. He focuses on sales, operations, inventory, product development, and finances at Pilk. So let's hear from Team Pilk, uh, which is focused on plant-based dairy. At fifty-seven percent of Indians are lactose intolerant, and they don't even know it. Hello everyone. I'm Abhishek Kumar, co-founder at Pilk. We are creating tasty, healthy, and sustainable plant-based dairy alternatives, and helping people to live a healthier lifestyle. Dairy contains a sugar named lactose, which cannot be digested by majority of Indians, leading to problems like gas, bloating, constipation, and diarrhea. Milk also contains a lot of bad saturated fat and hormones, which leads to increment in blood cholesterol level and acne. excessive consumption also leads to the antimicrobial resistance which finds a way in humans via milk dairy farming is also very unsustainable as almost for making 1 liter of milk it emits 2.9 kg co2 equivalent and consumes 2000 liter of water just to give you a reference growing 1 kg of pearls requires emits just 1 ton 1/10th of ghg there are a few plant based milk options available in the market they are made of oats soys and almonds but they all come with their own sets of problem and challenges like they all have off taste bad after taste they splits and curdles when we boil them they cannot be uh, cooked easily they cannot be used in tea and coffee they all lack 
some essential proteins and vitamins and minerals when compared to the milk. So what's the solution? It's pilk. Pilk is made by a unique blend of oats, cowpea and moong. It's a tasty, it doesn't have split on boiling, it has good complete protein profile, it's rich in calcium and vitamins. Being a non-dairy milk, it's free from lactose, cholesterol and trans fat. There's no animal pulls, hormones or adult trends. It also lowers down the environmental footprint by 80%. We have got some amazing customer review. They made puddings, cakes, pastas, filter coffee, and they all like the creaminess and the taste of the pill. There's no aftertaste and they all appreciated it. When compared to the competition, we score more than them in terms of all three major aspects like taste, nutrient, and culinary uses. Just to give you a reference, so fit, you cannot boil it, good milk, it is bad. Pill solves the issues. We started our initial research in January 2021, where we uh, did initial trials on more than 10 raw material combinations. We ended up finalizing the base, which mimicked the dairy in terms of rheological properties and other uh, flow behaviors, lightness index, and all those things by September. We did initial product prototype launch, factory level prototype launch in October 21. We took initial samplings from customers and did further R&D and resampling. The final the product launch was in Maharashtra via D2C and Pan India via e-commerce. We are planning to introduce two new milk SKUs in the next quarter, shifting Tetra Packs for a better cost-effective and sustainable packaging. By quarter three, we are planning to sell 2.65 lakh units across all the three SKUs. And by the year end, we are planning to reach 27,000 B2C customers and 125 B2B centers. Our initial customers are uh, individuals who range in the age group of 18 to 44 years. They are generation X, Y, and Z. They all live in metro cities and their household income is more than 50,000. They all have attended college. They are interested in healthy foods and lifestyle, veganism, either lactose intolerant or environment conscious. They are influenced by athletes, celebrity, and nutritionists. We are uh, in, we are approaching them through initial uh, channels like social media and community, nutritionist and wellness, vegan and healthy food outlets. The initial, the entire TAM is $61 billion, which is organized dairy sector. The SAM is $44 million, which is the current dairy alternate market size in India. We are planning to reach a revenue of $0.35 million by selling 19 lakh combined units of three SKUs by acquiring 32,000 customers. Our main revenue model is B2C, where we'll be uh, retaining 6.9 thousand customers and doing $265,000 of sales. Via our own website, that's a D2C mode, we'll be able to sell 35.5% in trial, bulk and subscription offer. Via e-commerce, mostly Amazon FBA, Flipkart, Selfship and Hyper Local like Big Basket. We are following inventory model and at an average 35% platform margin, we would be able to sell 57% of B2C revenue. B2B is mainly used as a brand awareness channel for customer acquisition. We'll be presented 50 centers by 2022 to have a revenue of 12.85k. When we are shifting to plastic from a uh, plastic bottle to Tetra Pak, we are seeing a massive reduction in cocks and improvement in gross margin. For D2C, it's from 47 to 60%, and for e commerce, it's th from 32% to 49%. So, for our SGN expenses, we are left with almost 4 rupees per bottle right now. In Tetra Pak, it would be 12 rupees. Similarly, in e commerce, it's 6 right now. In Tetra Pak, it would grow up to 12 rupees. When we look at our financial models, our revenue will grow from $2.1,000 in the first quarter to $150,000 in the last quarter. Our gross margin will improve from 40% to 60%, mostly because of reduction in COX and the efficient utilization of uh, machinery and all those things at a scale. We'll be able to procure raw material at lower cost. Our SGA will improve from 175% to 75%. Majority of that would be marketing expenses, which would go down from 160% to 63%. Our average order volume will increase from order value will increase from 300 to 600 at an estimated CAC of 400 to 450. Kanishk and uh, I are friends from the first day of college. We both graduated from VNIT. I'm mechanical, his computer science. I'm handling sales operation, inventory, and product development. He's looking after social and digital marketing, community building, and awareness channel. Mirthiro is our advisor. Uh, they are advising us on the processing challenge and the quality control. We are aiming to raise $200,000. Almost 55% would be spent on marketing expenses to drive growth. 15% would be spent on food tech consultancy to develop new SKUs. Remaining 30% would be equally distributed in operational and inventory cost to cover cocks and procure packaging materials. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kanishk and Abhishek. Uh, you can switch on your camera and we can um, begin your Q&A. Uh, first question is from uh, Mr. Vidya Shankar. Hi, Vidya. 
Yeah, hi, hi. Thanks, Shadul. Uh, hi, Kanishka and Abhishek. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, my question is, um, what's been the feedback uh, from your consumers? Uh, you mentioned software and other uh, uh, substitutes. Um, so I'm, I'm just a little uh, concerned that uh, when you, you know, is it only environmentally conscious uh, or slash health conscious consumers or do you have people uh, who are using this on an everyday basis? Uh, so yeah, shed some light on that, please. Uh, so they are people who are consuming it on daily basis, but they are initially as our in our go-to market strategy. Like uh, we are only targeting vegans and severe lactose intolerant people, and uh, that's why like uh, the the people mo are mostly like uh, who are uh, who are environment conscious and uh, and uh, towards on the on the vegan side. Along with that, uh, the uh, on the feedback part, they are making a lot of things out of it, and uh, they are liking the taste of it. If uh, if you look at uh, uh, that, they are making uh, decadent ball kind of cake. They are making chia pudding. They are making tea. They are, they are making regular tea out of it. They are making filter coffee. Latte arts are being made. Uh, we have given it in different cafes and restaurants all over Mumbai and Pune and people, and they are like liking the froth how it is coming out in in the coffees. Along with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you talked about, so like we mentioned about Sofit and the other plant-based milk uh, currently available in the market. So the first question and the topmost question which was asked from us was whether pelk will split on heating. Well, uh, will it curdle when I'm going to make tea or coffee with it? So it's like the, the major pain point of our initial customers were usability. Other milk cannot be used for making tea and coffee. It cannot be boiled same like dairy. And pilk is solving their problem. Like they are just, uh, we have got few uh, comments and messages like they have never, they, they have not tested such a great team last six to 10 years. So it has really worked very well on usability portion. And along with that, there's no off taste or aftertaste, which is quite evident in a lot of plant-based milk alternate currently available in India. So, uh, so can I have a follow on question, please? Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, you've been in existence for what, 12 months now? Uh, oh, so we just launched the product on January 31st. Yeah. Okay. But we so have been doing the research since 12 months. Yeah. Okay. So in the last two months, um, <clears throat> what's the kind of marketing? Because this, in my mind, requires a behavioral change. So, uh, you know, you mentioned about social media, reaching out, all of that stuff. Um, so I want to know what's the kind of marketing plan or spends that you're in research uh, and what's your co positioning going to be? Uh, so we are looking our product as a dairy replacer, as a milk substitute. And uh, that is how our marketing is also targeted. That uh, we are actually focusing more on the usability, that how they can use it in their day-to-day -day, uh, activities. Along with that, we are tapping nutritionists and dietitians who are recommending our product to their customers. So basically, in terms of that, uh, that the bad effects or the ill effects of dairy are not in this milk and, they can, and it can be used as a dairy replacer. So that is how uh, on the both fronts, it has been proven as a, as a, as a replacement of dairy. So your product is uh, essentially targeted towards uh, highly lactose intolerant uh, people? Uh, no, it's actually for anyone who wants to live a healthy lifestyle, anyone who wants to adopt a more plant-based uh, diet in their uh, part, uh, anyone who is looking for a more uh, lifestyle, healthy lifestyle friendly product. For initial go-to market, obviously the people who are highly lactose intolerant, they are going to uh, try it more easily without much marketing spend. Talking about the actual marketing uh, spend, like how much ratio is going at which part. Right now, uh, we don't have that much budget. We are boosted and we are looking for funding for that. For the initial first one, we have grown mostly organically by word of mouth and a different channels would be used as a marketing brand awareness. Almost 20-30% uh, would be used on uh, Facebook, Insta ad, and the remaining would be on uh, going through creating an awareness through nutritionist channels, putting some stalls, uh, taste tasting, sampling, moving to different places where we can actually get the uh, customers to taste the pill that increases the credibility of what we are saying. Right. Conversion it goes up. Yeah. Okay. My last uh, question is. Uh... Do you, uh, is there a, a, a landscape that you have uh, analyzed in terms of who are the other guys in the plant-based uh, dairy space and where are you positioned against them? Yeah, so are you uh, mostly, if you look at the India specific landscape, uh, there are a few old players like the Good Milk, they are mostly targeting uh, milk at the vegan landscape. 
all of their positioning is for the vegan as a dairy alternate so if it is targeted mostly to uh, fitness enthusiasts like anyone who is interested into uh, fitness protein and all those things uh, oat milk few new oat milk brands are coming they are also uh, mainly focusing on you know few are focusing on horeca aspect like showing the good side of uh, latte arts and all those and trying to get customers from there but there's not a good positioning in terms of uh, you know everyday milk which can provide you a healthy lifestyle without the bad effects of dairy so we are kind of into that space which we really think will grow exponentially okay all right okay. thank you thanks so much thank you so much for your questions with that uh, we'll take a next question from sarthak and sarthak in the interest of time if we can keep it short yeah so yeah 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 so i guess there's at least in the plant based ecosystem in this country there's large evidence that even the existing incumbents that you've mentioned um tend to plateau at a certain ceiling unless there's a very strong r and d funnel uh, of products uh, that they're able to churn out uh, through a series of hidden trials right um so what is your plan of action because you said you want to be an everyday brand i'm sure you realize you can't just do that with milk um so you have to be a dairy startup uh, and by that to have a very strong understanding of those products right so what's your r and d funnel looking like um and perhaps timelines for those and so for the first year as you said like uh, as we also mentioned in the deck we are only focusing on milk and milk uh, and flavored milk okay that uh, by the uh, by in the second quarter of this year we will have milk uh, flavored milk but uh, and moving ahead after this year uh, we will have uh, the uh, the curd part into it yogurt and uh, and beer cheese and butter uh that is uh, that is coming at a later part but uh, yeah for the for the first year we are, we are focusing on milk uh putting up our own r&d facility is coming along the way uh, but that will require a funding and uh, yeah. uh subsequent funding rounds and along with that r&d challenge there's a huge distribution challenge yeah. when you go into the refrigerated section so right now we don't want to do that and focus just on shelf stable product and uh, we understand that part and uh, that is mm. why we are also available on different e-commerce platforms we have understood that there is a huge demand of people who are uh, uh, fulfilling their own carts like a full dairy cart be it their curd be it cheese and all and that is why like we we have this dual approach uh, where we will be focusing on our d2c but uh, definitely we will be available to them on uh, on other platforms got it thanks guys okay last question from karan uh, real quick before we move on to the next bit yeah uh, hi guys you all touched upon quite a few points but if you can just touch upon the supply chain manufacturing and packaging what is your strategy for that while you plan to you know scale this up presently right. and going forward right so right now we are uh, sourcing our oats from scandinavian countries and copies and moong from local apmc market rest of the ingredients are also sourced from the local markets like apmc or uh, we have a sourcing oil from arc and similarly calcium other things from big local in, uh, players they are uh, reliable we they can maintain the same qc every time so as we try to scale we first need to switch from plastic bottle to tetra packs that's are going to be doable only when we cross like 5000 per month and we can procure from like inventory worth of 70 80000 liter so that will solve that end. and uh, we have chose chosen a uh, third party manufacturer who already has the most advanced machinery like decanter and all those things which is need, which is needing for you know to obtain that uh, consistent quality uh, dairy like quality so uh, he is uh, pretty much confident to do like even uh, 30 to 40000 uh, liter per month uh, and if we cross that limit we'll uh, source fund for setting up our own manufacturing facility in terms of distribution we are also looking for uh, like right now we are distributing from a single place but uh, as moving forward on scale we will be following a hub and spoke model yeah. uh, to have different uh, small warehouses at different locations yeah mostly different metro cities small warehouse and ship locally from there as we expand our d2c channel okay great thank you so much team pill for your q and a we'll move on to the next team uh, which is team uh, promise uh so team promise says uh, fermentation derived meat and it's consisting of karl cooper pratima and shrirang uh, sirsikar and the tagline is mycelium based protein rich products to serve as alternate meat products to a global market karl cooper is bcom and mba uh, who is self taught mycologist and a serial entrepreneur with 20 years of experience in setting up multiple running companies pratima is a biotech professional engineer 
biotech candidate from RVC with 15 years of experience uh, in analytical, genomic, and um, bioinformation domain. Srirang Sirsikar is a mechanical engineer and postgrad from NITI and an entrepreneur in agriculture and ex-management consultant with 17 years of experience. Um, so on to you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Carl from Team Promise. We are grateful to the team at GFI India and Industry Partners for organizing such an informative and interest, interesting challenge through his pick 2021. We have made great connections in our cohort through this well-structured program, and we wish to thank our mentors and advisors for their guidance and wisdom. Let me start by addressing the challenge we are facing globally today. 75% of the agricultural land is used for raising and feeding livestock, yet only provides one third of the global protein supply. Animal-based food systems are less efficient. Industrialized animal farming is responsible for 14.5% of the greenhouse gas emissions. India is going to face acute water scarcity in the near future. At a national level, a majority of the Indians are significantly protein deficient as per a recent ICMR survey. We are shocking, these were shocking discoveries for me. The question is, how do we feed 10 billion people three times a day in a nutritious, scalable, and environmentally sustainable way? Becoming vegan and switching away from meat is difficult for many. The efficiency of animal protein seems to have reached a plateau due to the biological limitations. Many of, it, of existing meat alternatives available in the market today don't perfectly mimic meat like texture, taste, and juiciness. Now let me introduce the team that decided to take on this challenge. I started my adventure with fungi in 2019. During the challenge, I connected with Srirang, who is working on commercializing agri-waste as a substrate for fungi, and Pratima with an expertise in the genomics and bioinformatics domain. We were surprised to learn that protein is grossly inadequate in the Indian diet. We joined hands with a vision to innovate and develop mycelium-based protein-rich products to serve as alternative meat products for global market. Promise is environmentally friendly, complete nutrition, scalable using submerged bioreactor design, and utilizing local agri-waste products to ensure a competitively priced clean label product. Promise will be marketed as biomice to B2B customers like restaurants, hotels, QSRs, and as pure mice when sold through B2C channels in the form of kebabs, nuggets, mints, and whole cups. Our mission is clear. We want to make this fungi-based protein as a part of daily diet of all Indians. Innovation, wholesome, sustainability, quality, passion are our values. We are identifying and cataloging indigenous strains of fungi for desired characteristics and building a library. Our genomics expertise or NGOs in-house pipeline would help us not just efficiently select strains, but also aid in quality improvement and food safety. Creation of bioinoculants for increased mycelium growth, submerged bioreactor with IoT-based real-time Monitoring use of local agri-waste products would help us uh, keep our costs down while recycling this waste into valuable compost post-production. We deliver on a value proposition through a process-driven, detail-oriented, meticulous, and systematic approach. There are no known competitors who have launched products in India for mycelium-based meat and logs. We will be amongst the first to introduce such products into the Indian market. International market has several companies. We believe our protein companies gain more from collaboration than the competition. Total chicken consumption in India by 2029 will be around 5.2 million metric ton. Considering our primary market as India, alternatives to chicken meat, total addressable market in 2030 comes out to be $400 million as a base case for domestic use and exports from India based on GFI and Tula study. Assuming 50% share of fermentation-based meat and lock, with mycelium being the strong contender, we aspire to have a dominant position in targeting 30% market share. We will launch our texture-rich protein biomass products for select B2B customers such as QSRs, leading chefs, alternative protein companies, and food MNCs. Our B2C target customers are early adopters in the age range of 25 to 44 residing in 8 tier 1 cities and top 10 tier 2 cities. Their annual household income is north of 10 lakh uh, with wheat consumption frequency about eight more than eight times a week. 
they are environmentally conscious scoring high on openness we estimate our tg to have 15 lakh individuals who consume 2000 crore worth meat annually our work starts with identification of indigenous strains feedstock optimization and bioprocess optimization Mycelium products being new to Indian market, we aim to engage with regulators, corporates, and organizations like GFI PETA early on. We will launch Biomass product in 18 months by end of 2023 and file for IP in India and internationally. We will raise pre-series A with an aim to get ready for scaling up B2B operations and launch of B2C products in the following 18 months. In the subsequent four or five quarters, we scale up B2C across India and license IP. We believe that mycelium has an enormous potential for disruption. However, it is a nascent sector which may take some time to mature. Keeping this in mind, we plan for several revenue streams starting in the near, medium, and long term. These involve bulk biomass sales, side stream valorization, product co-development partnerships with established food companies, direct to consumer products, and through IP monetization. We will break even in our fifth year. Funds requirement for the seed stage is about 1.5 CR. Majority of this will get into setting up fully functional lab and human capital. We have set aside some allocation for business development and partnerships with corporates to fast track time to the market. We thank you for your time. Let us join forces to bring mycelium to the masses. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Team Promise. Uh, let's have questions from the judges for you. So we have Carl Pratima and Srirang. Uh, who would like to ask the first question? Divya. Hey, uh, thanks for the presentation. Just curious in terms of uh, two questions, one on the product and how different it would be from the meat analogs available in the market already. Uh, in How do you, envision this and uh, the second is uh, in terms of ip strategy what specifically um, would be your road to patenting like what what are you hoping to achieve uh, thanks for the question uh, so our basically our first products to market would be the b2b versions which would be in a form of uh, a uh, biomass product as well as a powdered product that could be added to current uh, foods that are being produced. And our second would be to achieve whole cuts, which is really the end objective. So we can actually grow the mycelium in a submerged bioreactor to achieve the moisture uh, and you know texture of a whole cut of meat. Ideally, we're looking to mimic chicken. And from an IP perspective, which is the second part of your question, uh, we are really looking at taking advantage of the indigenous strains that are available in India. And we want to catalog these and build a library of strains, which could then be used and even commercialized with other partners who would be looking for similar products to add to their uh, you know, current uh, formulations. Okay, thank you. Great. Next, next question from Dr. Hao. Yeah, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, a couple of questions for me. Um, so uh, uh, I guess like, you know, uh, one of the question is like, you know, uh, I guess in India, um, if you want to import corn, uh, it's extremely expensive. So corn is like, you know, uh, uh, mycelium um, and it mimics chicken. So my question is, um, like you know, to to build to that scale, it, it requires you know corn is like one hundred fifty thousand liter to actually reduce the price. So how are you gonna get there? Uh, thanks. thanks for the thanks for the question. Uh, I you know as we mentioned in the presentation, uh, there are uh, you know there are actually win-win proposition, and we are actually you know we cannot name it right now due to confidentiality reasons, but we are talking with uh, one of the major players in uh, this category. Uh, for the possible collaboration in this space, number one. Number two, as we said, you know, like uh, the regulatory challenges are there in India. So, you know, uh, able to, if we're able to use some uh, already qualified strains and with optimization, and uh, if we are able to produce the uh, product, we have done some experimentation. So if we can reduce our time to the market, that gives us a head start. Those are the two, two things we are working on right now. 
Thank you. I think you answer both my questions and uh, my, my also comment or suggestion as well. Why don't you just work with a part partner with someone who is already in the market yeah, in India? Thank yep. you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hao. Next question is from Vidya. Yeah, hi. Hi, hi Carl and uh, um, your team, Shirang, Shirang and uh, uh, Reshma, I think. Um, my question is, uh, why you called ProMize? Do you think uh, people, consumers would identify with a brand name like that? Well, actually, the way I'd like to pronounce it is Promise. And that would be as in a better nutritional promise. And promise broken down is protein in the first part and mycelium in the second. So yeah. that was basically the point. thought process. What is the technical name? Um, um, so, uh, you know, um, can you tell me quickly uh, what's been the sort of uh, traction that you've got in the market so far? Uh, so we are still at a very nascent stage. We've been experimenting and I particularly have been driving the experimentation with different strains of mycelium. And uh, we're looking to now get a proof of concept in the coming few months. And we're hoping that post this challenge, we would be able to raise some funding to put together a basic lab uh, and take this further based on whatever I have so far achieved. You know, get the right talent in to uh, commercialize this. Okay, thank you. Sure, All right, great. Thank you so much, Team Promise, uh, for uh, the promising pitch. Uh, we'll 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 move on to our next team, unless we have another question. Great. So let's move on to um, the next team, which is team number nine, um, MFP Foods or uh, Alt Basket Private Limited, uh, which is a company focusing on plant-based dairy, comprising of Ronak, Pahava, Karina. Uh, Shah and Pranav Shukla, and their tagline is plant-based foods that nourish. Uh, Ranak is co-founder and currently leading the team of MFP Foods. He's a food technology graduate from Niftim and has worked with 50 plus new product developments in aseptic technology during his uh, stint at Tetra Pak. Pranav is also a food technology graduate from Niftim and he's worked at Draw Pressery and uh, worked on few product launches there. Currently, he's the technical advisor to the company. Karina is a qualified chartered accountant with a uh, bachelor's degree in business management and has experience in startup consulting, early stage venture capital, valuation, tax consulting with uh, 341, uh, 314 Capital, PwC, and EY um, uh, amongst few. So let's let's go on with the MFP Foods presentation. Hello, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. I'm Ronak from MFP Foods. We are creating an affordable, protein-rich, great-tasting dairy alternatives using local Indian agri-commodities. We'll work on high-protein substrates, innovative processes, and business model to ensure great taste, which meets the local palate. Our value chain promises to be the most efficient through a part ownership with the farmer entity. Here are the key problems that we're trying to solve. Animal-based protein, not only expensive because of poor feed conversion ratio, but is also a disaster for climate. Uh, when it comes to consumer, there is high incidence of malnutrition. 80% of the Indian diet is protein deficient. During our primary search, we found that pulses are one of the most affordable sources of protein. But farmer doesn't want to grow pulses. Why? Because yield per hectare in India is way, way less than the world average and 88% of the pulse production is grain fed only. This has led us to our solution that is MFP's great tasting plant-based range of products which are affordable, complete in nutrition and especially high in protein content and build deep partnership with farmers and are environmentally friendly. Uh, these are the key products that we are currently working on. Drinking oats and drinking chickpea are milk alternatives of oats and chickpea respectively. We are also working on chickpea-based curd, chickpea-based paneer and chickpea-based cheese alternatives. We are targeting 20% more protein content than the dairy counterparts when it comes to chickpea-based range of products. So we want to build a powerhouse of best-in-class four functions. The sales and marketing will identify trends from the market. These trends will be converted into new products for product development department. Uh, the products will be converted into simpler SOPs, which will be transferred to, F to an FPO. The FPO will look after for our manufacturing as well as raw material procurement. Uh, when the manufacturing is done, we'll look after for the supply chain. This way, we'll build a, an independent but an interdependent relationship. This model will enable us to be an asset light company. 
Uh, thus, uh, we'll be able to utilize our uh, capital more efficiently. As FPOs come under priority sector, the FPOs will have access to cheap capital from government schemes and bodies like NABARD. And, and we are also manufacturing close to consumption centers. So we'll be able to provide high service level to consumer as well as trade channel of us getting the need for high discounts and high margins. We are looking at four revenue streams, D2C, Horeca, Modern Tail, and e-commerce. By dimensionalizing dairy alternatives only, we believe that our TAM is 1.1 billion and our business model offers enormous scopes into adjacent spaces of agriculture and food processing. When we look at our competition, our competition is newer startups who are still figuring their product market fit. We have found Indian consumers tech very useful to build our target consumers. We are targeting India 1 and India 2 Alpha. Uh, our target consumers are in 18 to 45 years of their age, digital spenders and look for healthy alternatives they eat and has a an household income of more than 15 lakh rupees per annum. There are currently 120 million such people. The first year is focused on a single geography and subsequently the rollout to be developed for next top 10 and top 50 geographies. So we did a soft launch of our fresh product in January 21 in Godogram market. Uh, we achieved a revenue of 1.13 lakhs. To expand quickly, we started taking trials in retort, but we take we took four trials, but the product economics didn't make sense. So we, we changed back to the uh, fresh uh, product. We parallelly also got incubated in WCCS NIA. Uh, we are currently in the process of setting up a small pilot plant. Uh, we are looking to launch our first product in five different variants in Bangalore market in Q2 2022. Uh, once we have our first 500 subscribers, then we'll go for fundraise. We are looking to launch chickpea-based range of products in Q4 of 2022. As I already mentioned, we are in process of setting up a pilot plant in Bangalore. We are looking at a revenue of 1.5 lakhs in Q2 2022 and 13.5 lakhs in Q1 of 2023. When it comes to uh, talent requirements, we are divided into, into three phases. Phase one is getting the product market fit, uh, where we will sell the product through our pilot plant. Uh, once this phase is uh, once this phase is over, uh, the pilot plant will be converted into an R&D center. Phase two is outsourcing manufacturing to FPO in one geography and phase three is outsourcing manufacturing to FPOs in 10 geographies. Uh, so the pricing strategy is yet to be finalized, but assuming we'll sell at 120 rupees a liter, we are looking at a gross margin of 59.3%. Uh, the project in the uh, first year of its inception will cost around 70 lakh. When it comes to our team, me and Mr. S. Nagarajan are currently co-founders. I have a decent experience on working many products. Mr. S. Nagarajan has a wide area of expertise in agriculture processing and FPOs. Mr. K. S. Narayan is advising us on the business front. Mr. Pranav and Dr. Prakar Kanade are, are advising us on the product. Ms. Karina Shah and Ms. Jigesh Shala are currently leading us on finance and marketing respectively. Farmer impact is very important to us. Initially, our impact will be indirect, utilizing inexpensive crop, thus leading to better prices for the farmers. In longer term, the FPS will take shape, with whom we'll build deep partnership. We are also evaluating Indianization of ports, thus adding to local economy. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that pitch, uh, Team MFP Foods. So let's move on to the Q&A from judges. Uh, who would like to go first? Yeah, Siddharth. Thanks for the pitch. You mentioned you uh, will raise a round of funding after you hit 500 subscribers. Uh, why is that? Why will you not? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of money to be spent. Is it because you're self-funding right now? And yeah, once you okay. your, what will be the amount and where all will it go? Uh, so currently we are bootstrapped with founders capital only. Uh, when it comes to amount, we are yet to figure uh, where to spend the amount. It's to be decided. We first want to get some traction so that we have some proof of concept and then go to the fundraise. Sure. And which areas will you be spending the money on? Uh, so as I already mentioned, uh, the business the business model we are an asset light company. So our majority of the uh, money will go in consumer acquisition and providing high service level uh, to trade and retail uh, to uh, trade and uh, consumers. 
Makes sense. Thank you for your question, Siddharth. Anybody else? Yeah, Sonia. Um, thanks for the presentation. Just a clarificatory question. I wanted to understand if uh, all the products that you mentioned during the presentation have been um, have been I think put together for the customer uh, feedback and taste trials. Uh, so uh, not all the products. I had a, a small soft launch of oat milk in Gurgaon market. Uh, then to expand quickly, we shut, uh, I uh, moved to retort, but the economics and the product quality didn't make sense. So pivoted back to fresh model. So currently oat milk is tried and tested by consumers for us. Chickpea milk we are currently working on. Chickpea cheese is uh, pro uh, uh, tested by a small audience. In, uh, in the my college where currently the r and is taking place. And then uh, chickpea curd and chickpea buttermilk are currently in its in, in, in fancy stage. Got it. And what other ingredients do you use for, uh, let's say, chickpea cheese alternative or? Uh, so we are using a mix of flour and chickpea uh, protein isolates as of now. Uh, since we, are a uh, we, are, uh, we have opted for a fresh model, we will be clean label. And we have a view that uh, minimum ingredients uh, is the uh, better uh, uh, is better product in terms minimal processed product is better than uh, the highly processed product. Got it. And have you gotten it tested? Uh, I think at, either at a lab level in house or externally. How do uh, so we have uh, get it tested in house, but we are yet to get certification from a NABL accredited lab. We are in a process of that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Sonia. Um, who else would like to ask a question? We can take one more. All right, Dr. Ha. Sure, never, never missed the opportunity. Um, uh, so I want to know about your, your research. So, you know, uh, you know, there are plenty of oatmeal sound in market. Uh, what make your so different to the other, uh, other products on the market? Uh, so it's a mix of product uh, plus our business model. So we, first of all, Indian, uh, if we say India, the penetration of high uh, shelf life products in dairy category is very low. We want to position our product in the similar level first. Uh, so we are clean label and mini, 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 mini process. Uh, when it comes to our competitive as that, I believe personally is our business model. Why? Uh, because we work on a replacement model. We, uh, this way we uh, serve the demand. And uh, in uh, and our wastage is low. Second, we are low assets. Uh, uh, we are a low asset model. Thus, our expansion can be very fast. Third is high service levels, obfuscating need of high discounts uh, and margins to trade channel as well as consumers. So okay, it's uh, a needle of uh, these three four points, which will give us eight to ten percent, uh, per eight to ten uh, percentage points competition advantage over, over our consumers. Okay. Um, how do you scale? Are you co uh, using co-man? Uh, so our co-manufacturing will be farmers. Uh, so there is a model of, uh, uh, if you, I'm not sure whether you know about it or not, there is a Amul model in India. Uh, Amul did it for dairy. That is what we want to do it for agriculture. Okay. Can you perhaps explain a little bit about your distributed manufacturing? Yeah. Uh, so Sadhguru, can you please open the slide of our business model? Uh, if, if you may, just in like 20 seconds, just uh, okay. Level. Uh, okay. Uh, so in how in our house uh, in in our uh, company, we'll uh, we'll pick four uh, four center of excellence. First is sales and marketing. Second is new product development. Third is quality assurance or uh, slash manufacturing assurance. Fourth is supply chain. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll identify the trends from our sales and marketing department. What are the new trends? What are the new uh, crops in the market? Then these trends will be converted into uh, new products through our product development department. Once the product are developed, we'll uh, convert into simple, simpler SOPs, which will be transferred to a FPO. Uh, FPO is farmer producer organization in which farmers own bits and bytes of the uh, final company. So they'll do raw, raw material procurement. They'll do uh, final uh, uh, processing for us. Once the processing is, has been finalized, we'll look after our supply chain. So this is a model in a nutshell. So if I'm in such a technology forward area, how do you uh, anticipate transferring the technology 
um, that you know you have in house created to these distribution models which are not necessarily so tech forward farmers so uh, so this is where our expertise comes uh, so if you see our team we are expert uh, we have expertise in two major areas one is food technology second is supply chain uh, so when it comes to food technology we will uh, you uh, convert these uh, complex technology to simpler sops which is easy for the fpo to produce the product at scale and uh, there is also an added advantage to this model as fpo comes under priority sector they'll have uh, a cheap access to uh, capital through government schemes and government uh, organization like nabard so if you say if i i as a company go to a bank and ha have to get a loan uh, it it ranges from 18 to 20% when an fpo can get the same loan at 6 to 8% provided that we provide them a letter of guarantee so letter of guarantee is uh, that will buy everything whatever they'll produce got it thank you thank you ronak so with that i think we can close your q and a thank you so much uh, let's move on to pitch number 10 from uh, team rewild so team rewild is focused on uh, fermentation derived meat consisting of pratik patra and dr sapan kumar and their tagline is vegetarian choice of meat Pratik has eight years of experience in investment and corporate banking and hails from a family with 35 years of experience in hospitality. And Dr. Sapan is former scientist with CSIR, which is uh, uh, Indian Scientific Organization of Research Council, and also recipient of Young Scientist Grant by Department of uh, Science and Technology Government of India, and has experience of 15 years in the area of mushroom processing. So um, let's, let's get to the pitch from Rewild. Humans have been consuming meat for millennia due to its taste, texture, and mouthfeel. However, meat is a byproduct of slaughtering more than 50 billion land and marine animals every year. More than 800 people are undernourished and protein deficient globally. And it takes up to 70% of global land mass and trillions of water, liters of water for its production. Good evening, everyone. I am Pratik Patra from Rewild. We let nature do the magic. It's fascinating to see the innovation and excitement around the plant-based meat. While the focus of all the companies are on the processed meat, we see a completely different opportunity in the Indian market. Let's start with seeing how India actually buys its meat. Two very famous wet markets in Ahmedabad and Hyderabad. You can see hundreds of people visiting these markets during weeks or weekends. This shows in, how, in what form the meat is processed and consumed by the masses be it chicken pakoda, chicken 65, or a chef working on a whole meat cut. The Indian meat market is valued at $2.4 billion, out of which the whole cut meat contributes more than 90% of the market. So it's pretty clear that Indians love their whole cut meat. To our surprise, there is no plant-based meat player in the whole cut market. We see a huge opportunity in the alternative whole cut meat space. So why does India love its whole cuts? Well, it's fresh. It's versatile. Households and chefs love to use it to make different regional dishes. And lastly, it's affordable. For a country with per capita income of $2,000, this is one of the few things they can spend on. So let's focus on the problems with the current plant-based meats. The problem is, these meats have poor texture. Secondly, if you turn the pack, package pack side, you notice how ultra processed they are. Most of the meat have around 30 to 40 ingredients. People want food which are minimally processed. And finally, these meats are really out of reach for the masses. Our goal is to have a product that has the taste and texture of a real meat with minimal to no processing. So how do we do this? Well, our technology does this with the help of nature. The answer is mushrooms. Mushrooms have been known for its culinary properties for quite some time now. We at Rewild have developed a technology where we use root structure of fungi called mycelium to grow and not manufacture the whole cut meat. Our product naturally has the aroma, taste and texture of a real meat. The shape of our meat will resemble the whole cut chicken meat. So people can just treat it like a normal meat and make several dishes like Rogan Josh from Kashmir, Chicken Tikka or Ghee Roast from South India. So why fungi? Because it's got everything you want. The meat resembles the texture and aroma of an animal muscle tissue. It's clean. It has no antibiotics or pesticides. 
And lastly, it's highly scalable technology. Our technology can grow meat in only two weeks. Let's see our process. We are working on edible fungi species, which are already accepted by Food Safety and Standard Authority of India. Our strains have the potential to produce meaty flavor compounds besides nutritional and nutraceutical profile. We use our proprietary technology to create our whole cut chicken meat. This is our prototype along with the burger dish. Our prototype has same texture and flavor of the chicken meat. The meat has a strong nutritional and nutraceutical profile. It's high on protein, polysaccharides, meaty flavor compounds and low on fats. This is the photo of our facility which is located in the northern part of the country. We started our work in 2021 and formed our company in January 2022. And due to our research experience, we are able to make the prototype by February. We'll be filing patents in coming months, followed with food safety authority approval and then trials in partnership with hotels from November onwards. Our competitive landscape, it clearly shows that not just our product is nutritional and nutritional powerhouse, but is the only alternative whole cut meat provider for the masses. Our go to market strategy is simple. We are targeting the Horeca segment starting with Delhi and two temple town, Bhubaneswar and Puri. For our route to market strategy, we'll reach out to decision makers in Horeca segments like chefs and owners. Once we have convinced them, they can either order directly or through our mobile app. A few months back, we did a survey for three markets. We found out that the combined market potential is $50 million. We'll price our product at 500 rupees per kg. With our current capacity, we can produce 45,000 kgs of meat per year. Our gross profit margins will be around 60%. Our core member comprises of myself, Pratik Patra, having experience in investment and corporate banking. My family has 35 years of experience in hospitality space, and we plan to leverage that network for our expansion. Dr. Sapan, our co-founder, is a former senior CSI scientist and also is a recipient of Young Scientist Grant by Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, and has 15 years of experience working with mushrooms. We also have two excellent mentors from science and business field. Dr. Pramod Rath is a molecular biology professor at JNU, New Delhi, having more than 30 years of experience in teaching and research. Mr. Chandan Ghosh has 35 years of leadership experience at Nestle. He was the former regional and business head of Malaysia, Bangladesh and other sub-Saharan African countries. We are happy to collaborate with investors for funding, institutions for partnership, and we are also looking for right talent for, uh, for the expansion. So. Please help us grow meat using nature's technology. Please get in touch with me for collaborations. Thank you very much for your time. Oh. All right. Thank you so much for the pitch, uh, Pratik and Dr. Sapan. So let's go on to the Q&A with Siddharth's question. So thanks for the pitch. I've not, you know, as a vegan as mushroom all over the world, India and abroad, and you know, a lot of people agree with me that mushroom has a very meat-like kind of a feeling. To it. You're using that to create uh, all protein, but why? Why are more people not doing this, or am I mistaken? And there are a lot of other people doing this. India and abroad, I've not seen a lot of people use mushroom to make meat. I've seen mushroom leather, in fact. And uh, if I'm mistaken, please tell me about the comparative landscape so far. Well. Uh... You know, I have actually no idea why, you know, companies uh, in India, they haven't started this. Uh, but there are a few players uh, in uh, in America and in UK, like, such as, you know, the presentation I've already mentioned, like Quorn, uh, Meaty and Atlas. Uh, but we see our competitive landscape to be mostly the plant-based meat and the traditional meat. Because, uh, you know, if you see the, if you see the, you know, scale uh, to which these plant-based companies have reached, it's, it's nowhere near to the traditional meat. So we clearly see that we need to disrupt the traditional whole cut meat market and due to which we are developing this meat, which will be simply a, uh, you know, sort of a, a, a simple product, unstructured meat, which the chefs or households can simply use it in any way they want to do. Any meat, any dish they want to cook. So, so it's, it's very uh, versatile. Okay, just a quick follow up. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's fine. I what are your, what stage did you mention you're at currently right now, and how much are you looking to raise, and where can that take you to, in how much time? Well, actually, we have developed a proof of concept now, and uh, you know, right now we are working on the final product. Uh, you know, we are testing out it even further, and post that we'll be applying for the provisional patenting. Uh, you know, and by the year end, we expect the patenting 
and obviously we have to apply for the food uh, authority approval and then after that we'll be going with the partnership with the horeca companies uh, in the hotel space obviously um, and um, no, sorry if i hope that answers your question thank you yeah dr ha yeah thank you very much uh, so uh, my question you know relate to the previous uh, question is uh, at what stage are you in so i don't think you have answered that question doctor thank you for your question as i mentioned uh, we are actually right now in the uh, proof of concept stage we have developed a proof okay. of concept we are going ahead and reiterating the product and we're still developing it even you know in a much better way and uh, i mean it will take some time for us uh, as you can see in the images we have already you know shown a picture and we already have a facility in place uh, so that's where we are in right now okay um just just one follow on question so uh, I mean, it's very interesting that you be able to produce that uh, texture that you showed, you know, it's quite, it's quite an achievement. Um, are you growing them in bioreactor, submerged bioreactor, or is this like a, um, like a dry? Well, we, I'll, I'll, yeah, please. Thanks, thanks, I'm taking the question. Um, um, actually, we are using the technology which is, uh, which is using some dry uh, substrate, plant-based substrates, and we have optimized all the ingredients and the things are also very uh, easily available. And we are not using wire reactors. Uh, uh, the reason is the ingredients are very costlier and we have achieved the same thing with our ingredients, which are uh, plant-based. So that, that, may, that, that is making, the, making our product uh, cost-effective. Okay, thank you. Perfect, thank you. So Devya, next question from you. Great, thanks. Um, so did I understand correctly, are you using solid state fermentation? Is that yeah. what you're doing? Yeah. Okay, uh, so I have two questions. One is what exactly will you be patenting? What is your- uh, uh, we, have, uh, we are actually in a process for, uh, for filling the provisional patent for uh, we have uh, uh, we are going to file the process for patenting as well as the product patenting since we are using we have uh, uh, from our previous research uh, we have we, we we are able we have been able to get the strains which are naturally which can naturally produce the texture and the flavor of meat so uh, the process as well as the product is uh, both things are patentable and we are in a process of uh, provisional patenting. We have already completed the documents and- uh, Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's the strains and the process. That's yes. right. And, and what do you see as the next big challenges uh, before you go to market? Uh, actually, uh, we are looking for some seed money. Uh, already we have optimized uh, several things since uh, um, uh, we are working from so many years uh, on these kinds of aspects. So uh, seed money, uh, initial money is our uh, main hurdle that is uh, for scaling up. And we have also a facility to scale it up for three to five years. Uh, we can have uh, tons of uh, meat uh, for marketing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as Dr. Sapan said, we, we are looking for, you know, capital. Uh, you know, we have uh, infused our, uh, I know, basically bootstrap this facility uh, ourselves, I know, just to have something in hand. But then the bigger challenge would be the, obviously the funding. And after that, uh, we have something in place for expansions. As I mentioned in the hospitality space, we have established networks and they have shown interest that they would love to try this product. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, Team Rewild. We'll move on to our next team, uh, team number 11, uh, Zero Cow Factory, which is focusing on cultivated dairy. And uh, it's team consisting of Parini Kapadia uh, and Devhati Palan. And um, their tagline is building global dairy 3.0, starting with India's first animal free milk. Panini is a founder and chief scientific officer with a master in biotech and PG in advanced clinical research and uh, pharmacovigilance with 10 years of research experience. And um, Devhati has a BTEC in genetic engineering and has worked as a research associate in the field of life sciences. So let's hear from Zero Cow Factory.
Hi everyone. Do you know we need to produce more food in next 40 years than we have in the last 8000 years combined? The traditional food production methods are inefficient to meet the future demands. So, welcome to Zero Cow Factory. I am Parini Kapadia, founder and chief scientific officer. We are producing India or even Asia's first animal free milk, dairy, and food products using precision fermentation. The problem statement is massive across sustainability, climate change, animal welfare, and ever-growing population with limited natural resources. The overproduction of cattle is required for meat and dairy industry, which is responsible for one-fifth of the global greenhouse gas emission. And it's a global problem and more complex in India and Asia. As India is responsible for 30% of global cattle production, Secondly, India is number one in terms of dairy production and consumption, but 73% Indian population is protein deficient. Even the problem statement is extended here. So we produce nature identical and high nutritional valued milk protein using bioengineering the microbes and precision fermentation. From product developmental side, we have identified four different steps. So everyone can understand what we are doing. First step is the selection of the cow breed. So we have selected one of the most premium A2 milk producing cow and it's a gear cow. Second step is a gene cloning procedure. So here we engineered the microorganisms in a such a way that those microorganisms are able to produce the milk protein in a similar way like the traditional cow. Third is the precision fermentation. So here we use microorganisms as a platform to produce our targeted milk protein at a larger scale. Then there is a downstream process is basically for the purification of the protein. So after all these steps, we are ready with our targeted milk protein in a raw form. Now milk protein play a very important role for color, taste and texture of the milk. And when we want to produce different kinds of the dairy products from the milk at that particular moment, the milk protein play a very important role. That's why we have started our work with the milk protein. So we have started our work with the world's first animal-free A2 beta casein. And our MVP is lady at the laboratory scale for A2 beta casein. After that, we have already started working on the kappa casein and beta lactoglobulin. So currently, we are working on three milk proteins simultaneously. We have identified CNPA as a strategic R&D partner for pilot commercialization. We are starting with B2B or B2B2C as a mass protein ingredient supplier to various industries like dairy, food, CPG, nutraceutical, and many more. Uh, parallelly, we are also exploring to co-develop animal-free cheese and yogurt and few other products. And many big giants like Pasquale, Nestle, and Jivadan are already in talk with us to explore different use cases using our protein. Based on regulatory, we are going to start with the Singapore in the end of this year, followed by USA and India. The good news is that Indian food regulator FSSI has released first draft to support novel food using GMO. So we are expecting final guidelines very soon. We are a young company and early movers in this space in Asia, but we compare ourselves with global competitors like the Perfect Day, Remil, Formo, and few others. Out of all these companies, Perfect Day is in commercialization and have raised USD 750 million already. Now, from unfair advantage point of view, everyone else is working on to the generic casing, but we are working on specific casing and it's a PA2 beta casing, high value protein. Other point is that other companies are working on Bosch, Taurus, cattle. They are the HF and Jersey cattle, means Western cattle, but we are working on Bosch Indicus cattle. It's an Indian subcontinent cattle. So we have created mm. our entire IP across A2 beta casein and Boss Indicus cattle. Now there are two main reasons to target A2 milk protein. First is that the A2 milk protein is considered as an original milk protein when the cow evolved on this planet. But due to human, human intervention, there were a mutation into the cow genome. And due to this mutation, cow has started producing even kind of the milk protein. Second reason is that when we consume even kind of the milk protein after digestion, beta casomorphin is produced, which creates very negative impact on our body system. Tim Weiss Sohil is a founder and CEO. He is a serial entrepreneur and Zero Cow Factory is a third venture for him. I am managing entire product developmental side. 
I have 10 plus years of research experience in field of clinical microbiology, food analysis, and dairy analysis. Currently, we have very strong R&D team across different subject area, combining 80 plus years of research experience. We are only SN startup part of the Milky Butter program. It's first global incubation program for cellular agriculture, specific for dairy, backed by the Pascual team. It's one of the largest dairy in Spain. Currently, we got invitation from Bring. It's a Hong Kong-based food tech accelerator program. From international entry-wise, we won one of the challenge by Jivadan. It's a slingshot 2021 corporate challenge. And through this challenge, Enterprise Singapore has already invited us to explore the market in Singapore. And other global recognition you can see on the screen. We are actively raising USD 2 million seed fund, and this seed fund will help for to get pilot scale, GTM ready, and Singapore approved. Thank you, and please join us on a mission to feed 10 billion people by 2050. All right, thank you so much, Team Zero Cow Factory, for your pitch. Let's invite questions from judges. Who would like to go first? Siddharth. Thank you uh, for the pitch. Uh, I just would like to learn a little bit more about regulation in India. Uh, do you see yourself being a multinational company, given that in India there might be regulatory issues for the technology you're using? And uh, how tough will it be then as a for uh, international player to compete with the guys who've raised a lot of funding so far? So uh, means uh, regulatory wise means when we talk about for the Indian, so means uh, Indian regulator FSSI has released the first draft to support the novel food using the GMO and they have released this first draft in November 2021. Now we are expecting the final guidelines very soon. So currently only four countries are ready with the regulation guideline. First is a Singapore, second is a USA, third one is a Canada and fourth one is a Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you for that response. Any further question there, Siddharth? Yeah, just one more thing. So do you see, uh, it'd be interesting to know where, where you will be once you raise funding, the quantum you're looking at and which will you be focusing with that? Hello? Sorry, we just lost you a little yeah. bit there, Siddharth. Yeah. Sorry, I was I was just saying it would be interesting to know how much capital you're looking to raise right now and which areas you will you be allocating that capital to going forward. Okay, so currently we are raising 2 million as a seed fund and this seed fund will help to uh, get the pilot scale for three milk proteins, then the for the GTM readiness and for the Singapore approval. Okay, thank you. All right, Divya. Next question from you. Uh, I'd just like to hear a little bit more uh, about uh, what stage you're at currently. What have you achieved in terms of uh, technical milestones? Okay, so means currently we are working on to the three milk proteins simultaneously. Out of all these three milk protein means uh, for A2 beta casing, we are on the pilot commercialization. And we have identified CNPA as a partner for the pilot commercialization. And for other two proteins, we are at the laboratory scales. Okay, just just a quick follow up. I mean, in terms of the expression uh, of the uh, cells, has this been completed? And what were the results of this? Uh, for which protein means you are asking for the all three? The, for, yeah, I'm asking for the three proteins you're working on. Okay, so like means... At uh, what stage? Okay, so means for A2 beta casing, we have already achieved the uh, means... Uh, uh, protein production at the laboratory scale. Now we are transforming our whole technology from laboratory scale to the uh, pilot level scale. And for mm -hmm. other proteins, we are at the uh, laboratory scale achievement. And for two proteins, we have already achieved the recombinant clone. Now we are at the laboratory scale formulation. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, great. Any, any further questions from anyone? Dr. Ha? Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I, I do know Zero Crow Factory uh, quite well. So, uh, yeah, I better not ask any questions. I don't have any questions anyway. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Great. So with that, I think we'll move on to our last uh, 
pitch for the day. Just give me a second. Uh, okay, so we have uh, our last but not the least, team number 12, uh, Blue Fins, uh, which is a plant-based seafood um, company focusing on uh, creating plant-based uh, seafood uh, and, which deliver, and which promises to deliver the finest of the sea without a catch. Uh, its members are Gaurav Vora, Kavinya B, Gitanjali MK, and Ugyen uh, Chosen. So Bluefin consists of four members and the team has a balance of technical and business professionals with experience. Kavinya is completing her degree in food process engineering and Ugyen has a master in molecular biology. And together they are focusing on product development Gitanjali has a master in uh, international business with, exper with experience in consulting and Gaurav has master in marketing with over 13 years of agri and food business experience. So uh, let's hear from team Bluefins. Good evening everyone. Welcome to Face of the Team Bluefins. We are plan based seafood startup incorporated in the year 2021. This evening we will be presenting our innovative idea to develop the finest of sea without a catch. We have a strong team with diverse backgrounds from business development and marketing to food engineering and molecular biology. We are back with supporting advisors experienced in technical and scientific domain. Myself, Kavanya, the food process engineer in the team, and Gitanjali, the sales and marketing strategist, will be taking you through the deck. First of all, we are thankful to GFI India for bringing out the India Smart Coding Innovation Challenge and helping us identify each other to join towards a big dream of creating sustainable and affordable plant-based seafood that suits a wide range of Indian and continental cuisines. The main problem, as we see, is 90% of the global wild fisheries are overfished and exhausted. In order to ensure a food secure future and save the marine ecosystem, inland fisheries and aquaculture has flourished. Currently in India, inland fisheries accounts for more than two-thirds of the total fisheries in the country. But solution of aquaculture and inland fisheries are backed with numerous problems affecting both humans and the environment. Among all, 80 to 90 percent of the mercury content in human body can be traced to seafood consumption, which is quite threatening. To solve this huge issue, we have come up with an innovative idea to mimic fish fillet by using underutilized plant sources through hybrid technology of fermentation and fuel cell to create ready to cook fish fillet. Here, we are determined to reduce the dependency on a handful of base ingredients such as soy and gluten as alternate proteins, but to explore agricultural byproducts that are more often wasted before entering the value chain. We will also backward integrate with farmers uh, that would help them generate an additional income stream. Uh, the major value proposition of the company is to produce flaky textured plant proteins that are affordable as the conventional ones. So our products will also be clean labeled and minimally processed that lets the consumer to indulge in guilt-free alternate seafood options with real nutritional benefits. Our unique value proposition is the ingredient repository where we'll be creating database of various ingredients that choose the sensitivity and nutritional profile of wide range of inland fish varieties. We are focused on upstream processing of our ingredients uh, with a combination of fermentation, texturization, and the fortification of omega-3 fatty acids, which has the potential to be patented. As currently we lack the facility of QSL technology, we are looking forward to fabricate one in the upcoming months. But initially, we are working to develop plant-based uh, inland fish fillet using whole cut banana blossoms and other ingredients by improving their nutrition and functionality through lack of fermentation. Uh, we have identified banana blossoms as potential ingredients in the plant-based fish fillet for their taste and texture. And also, this can be a medium of getting a more dietary fiber into our diet, which is otherwise not possible while consuming a conventional one. Currently, we are focused on replicating species like uh, Ruhu and Hilsa, as these are some of the highly consumed inland fish varieties in the Indian market, which has also a high profile of omega-3 fatty acids. Over to Gitanjali. Thank you, Kavanya. We are in the process of building a prototype while improving texture and product formulation. Over the year, some of our key milestones are to have a minimum viable product by October and have our packaging and shelf life analysis by February. Our company was incorporated in November 2021 and post the ISPIC challenge, we aim to raise a minimum of rupees 50 lakhs directed towards recruiting experts for our team and also product development and validation. Here is a glimpse of our spend allegation in different areas. 
we will be prioritizing the b2b over b2c market and partner with qsr companies such as dominos and burgrill that are now providing plant based alternatives to customers in india our buyer persona here are the product innovation teams that are finding lack of alternatives we will be approaching them through on site marketing and collaborations in b2c our target audience are urban professionals that are predominantly meat eaters living in tier 1 cities in a survey conducted by our team out of 31 respondents 16 people find plant based meat highly processed and 13 have no access to plant based meat in india we will be providing them our plant based fish fillet through their preferred channels of retail stores and digital marketing in a report by deloitte and gfi the approximate plant based meat market value in india is 13 million dollars and we aim for a minimum of 15% market share giving us a huge opportunity in this space we differentiate ourselves from our competitors with our unique blend of low cost and highly functional ingredients we aim to build a product portfolio in the future through our ingredient repository containing different ingredients in various combinations that are suitable for all the species of seafood the successful funding by other companies provides us with immense opportunity and we aim to join the list of these companies i thank you for your time and if you do have any feedback or queries please do write to us all right thank you so much team blue fins so let's get started with the q and a for team blue fins uh, who would like to ask the first question to team um, blue fins Yeah, Dr. Hao. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, I think one comment is that you use like banana flour, which is quite a unique uh, ingredient. So uh, well done there. Um, so uh, my question is, um, you know, uh, how does it, like, you know, how how much utility, like, how much you can utilize your 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 um, you know your alternative fish, right? Your 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 product. um is it just fry or can you use it in a curry uh, or bo- like you know any soup or any other uh cooking way, uh, method of cooking yeah uh coming here thanks for the question dr how uh, you want to just answer the versatility of the product yeah i would take over um actually we have uh, initially chose banana blossoms because uh, the banana blossoms are very versatile uh, and has unique uh, texture as comparable to the fish fillet like the flaky texture so it can uh, it is not only composed to uh, just uh, fried fish it can also be used in curry that you told and also we can use in multiple uh, varieties um, initially we are uh, producing a p- product prototype using whole cut banana blossom which is which has potential uh, to be used in uh, texturizer uh, which we are focusing in the future and also this uh, we are focusing on you know utilizing banana blossoms in a wide range of indian cuisine Uh, so uh, for example in the north indian cuisine as well as south indian and uh, the northeast cuisine so it uh, it has the potential to be used in any in any type of uh, dishes okay that's that's great my follow on question is um once you start to scale up like uh, is there a supply issue because like from my understanding right limited understanding anyway like one banana we have only one one blossom right yeah so i think the that is definitely one of the challenges we would see uh, when we kind of try to scale up as one of these as the ingredient and even getting the quality of that consistency and quality of that product uh, we've been I, i would say yes we've been uh, at this point in time uh, kind of exploring more on the on building the prototype and i think the second part of it would be to figure out uh, on the uh, on the supply chain piece of it that how do we make sure we bring in that consistency Uh, and quality in the ingredient as well thank you great um uh, who would like to go next sadat karan divya sonia divya so uh thanks thanks for the presentation and the question um in terms of uh, fundraising and uh what you're really looking at uh can you elaborate on what is this going to be used for yeah so we have currently uh, put a ask for about 50 lakhs or about 65000 dollars uh, the primary focus is to basically work on product development because right now we are at a stage 
we've got a prototype, but I think there is a lot of scope of improvements within that. Uh, so we're going to invest in terms of getting our own, fabricating our own uh, quid cell. As you know, that's not available off the shelf. So you have to bring uh, about a little bit of a change in that technology, uh, as well as, you know, getting a, a team, a mix of uh, the right team to be able to deliver on getting a, a more refined and more uh, product. So that's what I think I would say 60, 70% is going to go in that. And then of course, uh, some marketing in terms of, you know, building uh, this being that it's come to be a unique ingredient. Uh, I think we want to also start promoting that uh, as our value proposition. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so that last question for me. Uh, so uh, thanks for the pitch. I just to know, uh, in the end, it was a very brief uh, competitive landscape slide. So can you talk more about how you differentiate from your competition currently and uh, what are the ways in which uh, you, uh, apart from differentiating, will you kind of uh, compete with not just um, not just the companies you mentioned, but, you know, in general, the meat market, the real fish, uh, you know, why will people replace the real fish with you? Yeah, so I think what we are trying to basically build is firstly an ingredient repository, right? So uh, we've seen that till now, uh, what we understand that uh, most of the players have been looking at one or two ingredients. And what we want to try to do is focus on the upstream part of things where we look at a good mix of uh, ingredients that will uh, help us reduce the kind of, you know, the concepts of minimal processing and all of that. So we want to have that ingredient repository uh, we're, secondly, we are focusing on inland fishes, as uh, uh, Kavinia mentioned during the presentation, which is again a new, uh, I would say, an opportunity which is currently not being looked at by uh, most of the players. Uh, and uh, thirdly, we are also looking at building a portfolio. So we are not, uh, we're looking across the seafood uh, space and saying that let us try to identify uh, for each of the type of seafood uh, product what would be the right ingredient mix as well as the technology to get that. Um, and I think that is two or three things that will help us differentiate from our competition. Okay, interesting. And pricing wise, how different will you be to Brew 51 and the other players you mentioned on your deck? Yeah, so like you said, we, we're a little early stage, but I think from whatever initial uh, numbers we've got, because being we're using uh, agriculture waste streams or you know, byproducts, uh, the cost helps us, kind of, that kind of keeps the cost down. Uh, but we've not really done a unit economics to, to the T to really come back and say that. But I think with these, uh, as well as, you know, we have the quid cell, which is much more uh, efficient uh, in terms of cost. So I think with a combination of these uh, different elements, I think we will be at par. What we're trying to target is at par with uh, the conventional fish uh, at this point. Okay. And who's the first, to, sorry, last follow up from my side, who's the Who's the, uh, who do you expect to be the first to market from all these people? And is that his first mover an advantage or a disadvantage in this segment specifically according to you? Uh, I think it's, I, I've not, I don't know, we already, uh, I think the, uh, one of the players has already uh, tied up with uh, Domino. So Jubilant Foodworks has invested in uh, one of the players. And I think they are, they're already getting that out in the market pretty soon. Uh, I think it will be, it's definitely an advantage you could say from, the point that you know they, they're there but i think uh, this market as you as we've heard from all the player, uh, teams here that you know the plant based market is still very new and it requires a lot of awareness building and so that will be an advantage to us because by the time we have a product in a year or two uh, these will be much more accepted uh, at least in the qsr kind of uh, uh, community and uh, there'll be much more acceptance and easier for us to kind of uh, pitch our products at that point in time All right. Thank you for your responses, Team Bluefins, and thank you for all the brilliant, uh, insightful questions, judges, throughout the um, three-hour demo day. Uh, and thank you all for patiently staying through uh, these in interesting and very exciting, intriguing pitches. Um, with that, uh, to just close out the session that we've had today, uh, we also have uh, Varun Deshpande, who's the Managing Director of JFI India and JFI Asia. I'd like to invite him to share a few thoughts, and after that, we can 
also invite a few of you to share your experiences, maybe two, three of you over the past four, five months. And uh, maybe if any of the judges would like to share any thoughts on how the experience has been um, at SPEC 21, 22 demo day, um, that would be great. So starting with you, Varun. Okay, so before we hear from Varun, let's let's invite a few participants to share um, their journey so far over the past. We started out like you saw earlier in the session. We started out with the applications process in August, starting the challenge in September, and now we are in March of 2022. So you know, time has just flown by across multiple phases, and you all um, you know are part of the top 23 teams, uh, especially in track two. There are the top 12 teams that have made so far. Um, so perhaps we'll start with Pratik. Uh, Pratik, would you like to share your thoughts? Well, thank you, Shardul. Uh, I would like to thank uh, everybody in GFI, along with the mentors and uh, you know other people who actually helped us shape our business model even better. Our goal was to join GFI community and finesse our business model in this whole process. And uh, we believe we have achieved that in some level. That also gave us opportunity to make this uh, you know a, a concept uh, you know of the meet. And uh, again, uh, thank you very much for your, all your support all this while. Uh, looking forward for many more collaborations in future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pratik. Uh, Pratima from Team Promise. Uh, thanks, Shardul. Uh, so actually, we are very grateful to the uh, team at GFI India and all the industry partners here for organizing this event. Uh, it was very interesting challenge. We uh, you know, got into the SPEC 2021. We were very fortunate to make great connections in our cohort through this program. You know, a lot of friends we got through this. Uh, we also got introduced to the talent community and many more uh, resource uh, uh, portals uh, through this challenge. So we want to thank our mentors, our advisors for all the guidance throughout the challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Pratima. And we'll go with uh, Punarva. Uh, thank you, GFI, for uh, making such a platform. This is like the first time that I have participated in something which a national level. So I learned a lot. I gained a lot of experience from this. Uh, I've learned how to write proposals and some of the business aspects, which I wasn't aware of. And then all the IPs and all the uh, seminars which you held was really good. So it helped me a lot to go through everything so thank you absolutely Panarva. building talent pool for the sector so that you know other startups can find the relevant uh, team members core team members is definitely one of the key uh, areas of focus for aspects so we are really glad you were able to find that uh, we'll close out with yash wazir from team salis hi can you hear me yes yeah, yeah, so I would just like to mention that I love the effort and in initiative by GFI India in organizing ISPIC. Our progress and motivation to work in this space has been immensely supplemented by the resources and expertise that has been provided by the GFI India team and the Smart Protein Innovation community as a whole. So I would like to say thank you and yeah. Absolutely. It has been a pleasure. So we today saw, uh, you know, 12 teams, Phototech, which is focusing on fermentation derived protein and ingredients um, and, you know, creating um, uh, plant based meat applications and other alternative uh, uh, applications from it. We saw team Next Eggs focusing on two part plant based egg. We saw team Salace focusing on fermentation derived protein and ingredients, again, with their computational approach for protein discovery. We saw team Beta MG, which is focusing on plant based dairy and focusing on a powdered dairy kind of a solution for B2B space. We saw team Mycovation, uh, again, focusing on fermentation derived protein and ingredients um, um, as well. We saw team Clever Meat, which is focusing on cultivated meat and seafood. We saw team Pilk, which is focusing on plant-based dairy, replicating the sensory aspects of uh, animal dairy. We saw team Promise, uh, again, focusing on fermentation derived meat. We saw uh, team MFP Foods, which is Old Baskets Private Limited, focusing on plant-based dairy from minimally processed chickpea led ingredients with a distribution um, uh, manufacturing model uh, like a mole. We saw uh, Rewild, which is again a fermentation derived mushroom, um, uh, uh, fermentation based meat 
wheat company, we saw Zero Cow Factory, which is focusing on cultivated dairy proteins. And we finally saw Team Bluefins, which is focusing on plant-based seafood from banana blossoms. So super exciting, very, very diverse, interesting proposals uh, we have uh, this, this time. And it has been a pleasure over the past five months and perhaps with a lot of you over the past three years that you've been in our community and have been, uh, you know, uh, consuming a lot of our resources, coming to our webinar sessions, uh, making use of all the platform that we have created and this active community we have created. So we are really excited um, to see the growth of smart protein innovation in India. When I started working out at GFI India three years, three and a half years ago, back in uh, 20 late 2018, 2019, uh, there were just a couple of companies in India, right? And since then, this uh, ecosystem has grown multifold and there have been an exponential growth in the number of early stage startups, uh, as we saw today from multiple industry professionals, um, you know, uh, people with science tech backgrounds, business backgrounds, finance backgrounds coming all together to create um, synergy uh, amongst this ecosystem in this pre-competitive early stage ecosystem. So we are really glad for all of this. And I, with that, I'll invite a couple of you judges to share any thoughts you had in attending and judging and evaluating our teams for track to entrepreneurship today. Um, if I may invite Siddharth. Uh, sure. Uh, thanks a lot, um, Chardul and the whole GFI uh, India team. This has been a remarkable session. I think we paced really well. Thanks for all everyone pitching today. I think the ideas are all, you know, so exciting and I'm looking forward to see all of you grow your companies um, because there's a lot of potential in each of the segments you've chosen, you know, whether it's fermentation, whether it's cell-based, uh, you know, meat, whether, whether it's uh, plant-based dairy, it's all uh, the, you're, I think you're on the right side of history, for all the right reasons, whether it's for the planet, for health, for animal welfare, all those reasons are equally important. And I can tell that from the pitches that um, there was a lot of effort made uh, from all of you to uh, get together, uh, you know, the right facts and the right in the limited time you had. So uh, I enjoyed uh, listening to it. And thanks for entertaining mine and all the other panelists, uh, the judges questions and uh, looking forward to uh, being in touch with all of you. Thanks. thanks. Fantastic. May I invite Sonia as our organizing partner on the challenge from CIECO to share her thoughts? Uh, thank you so much, Shadal. Um, I love listening to the pitches. I think all uh, in terms of the innovation, in terms of the categories or um, you know, the different types of technology that are being leveraged to bring products for the industry. I think all are very diverse in the, each sense. Um, having said that, I've also seen and tracked the journey that uh, Smart Protein has had in India. So quite uh, encouraging to continue to work in the sector and uh, follow GFI India and maybe find more innovative uh, place in India. Thank you so much once again. Fantastic. So with that, uh, we'll, we'll probably close out this session. It has been an incredible um, uh, privilege to have witnessed all your work over the past five months, like I said. And uh, we hope that all our panelists uh, today are able to connect with you post the challenge. I'm sure um, they'll be happy to, uh, you know, uh, receive a networking requests from you and you can reach out to them. And perhaps this demo day recording, uh, when we circulate it with a larger community, uh, would really help you connect with the relevant networks, resources uh, that you are looking for. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. And um, we'll be releasing the results of the demo day soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that uh, in the next couple of days. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time out and joining today. Um, wish you a great, a great weekend and have, have a good time. Thank you.